uh, of course, if it does, <coughs> excuse me, if the session does, <coughs> excuse me, if the session doesn't go well, then we won't share the recording. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. So yesterday we did a lot of uh, stuff, and uh, I hope that some of you got a chance to see the recording again. And if you didn't, I hope some of you printed out that uh, thing that I sent to you. And we will today start with revising it. Uh, we'll just go through each step one by one, and then we'll talk uh, about various pathologies. Okay. So before we talk about pathologies, I think it's worth revising once about what we learned yesterday. Okay. So is Bhushan in the room? Yes, sir. Okay, Bhushan, uh, you will start yeah. off. Okay, so but first, before I start off on the revision, there are some questions sent to me specifically by some people. So okay. before I start today's topic, let me answer those questions. Uh, these were specifically sent uh, by different people, so I'm trying to answer. So one question I think Ramaswamy asked me was, "What is 4D CT scan?" So 4D CT scan is uh, a type of CT scan which uh, involves not just the location, which means you're not only trying to see a X axis, Y axis and Z axis of the tumor, but you're also trying to see the movement with uh, respiration uh, or with any movement. So whenever you put in a dimension of movement into this uh, film, then it is called as 4D CT scan. And the fourth dimension is movement because when you're trying to give radiotherapy or you're trying to do RF ablation, it is absolutely important to know where is the tumor when your beam reaches the uh, site where you think the tumor is? Because with the respiration, the tumor will move, okay? So this is very useful. The 4D CT scan is a new technology which is very useful for therapy, particularly when you're doing radiotherapy yeah. and RF ablations. Uh, the 4D CT scan actually gives you value by telling you that in inspiration, the tumor is one centimeter below. In expiration, the tumor is one centimeter above. So it's a very good technology, uh, which actually takes into account the body's breathing, the tumor movement, and more importantly, also the, movement of the nearby body organs. Switch off your phone. Who's that? Uh, admin, who's admin? Whoever is admin, switch off your iPhone. Switch off your iPhone. Who is admin? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, so th this is the concept of 4D CT scan. So it takes into account the body's breathing. It takes into account the movement of the tumor and also the movement of the nearby organs. And this adds value, particularly when you're doing uh, radiotherapy, because the radiotherapy, then you can localize into that area and reduce the side effects into the surrounding tissue, okay? So this is a straightforward uh, answer for, uh, I think Ramaswamy asked me this question. Uh, it's a very good question. It's a new technology and it's worth knowing. Uh, in fact, uh, nowadays, uh, if you look at movies and things like that, uh, they have got all, already 5D, 7D, and things like that. Whereas 5D and 7D involves movement of the viewer. So it's not just what you're seeing on the screen, but even you are moving or water splashes on your face. So that's another dimension to the, to the imaging. But uh, of course, we don't need that in, in medical technology. But in Hollywood and in movies, they've already got 5D, 7D, 9D. Okay, various effects they add in. So they actually make the experience better. That's what it is. That's why they, it's called as 4D CT scan. The second question, I think Arif asked me, Arif Sheikh, uh, I think from Calcutta, Ardhika. He asked me, sir, could you please explain what is ECG gating for cardiac MRIs? It's a very easy uh, concept to understand. Uh, the heart is a beating organ. MRI takes a very long time to acquire uh, images, okay? So you have to go through the whole of systole, whole of diastole, whole of systole, whole of diastole. So it's a very large uh, time factor for acquiring uh, the image. And in addition to that, there is movement. So movement also changes with every, lit every uh, heartbeat, the movement of the heart changes. So particularly when you're trying to look at certain pathologies, uh, maybe something like a systolic anterior uh, movement of the mitral valve, or if you're looking at diastolic uh, uh, dysfunction of the heart, then you don't, you, you really need to concentrate on that phase of the cardiac cycle, all right? So what you do is you do ECG gating. So you target the ECG to that phase. So depending on if you want to look at systole, you target the ECG according to the systole. 
So only at systoles the whole acquisition occurs. And then the, the, the first, initially it will acquire everything, but during systole it will focus and give you a more concentrated image. So it's really motion imaging with specific points of a cardiac cycle. It's, it's a very, very nice technology, particularly when you're looking at uh, specific diseases of the heart and it works very well in an MRI scenario. So that's what it is. You could do either RR interval or you could do P2P interval. It depends on what you want at what phase of the movement of the heart that you want to capture in high definition, you use that phase. So you can narrow the band, you can increase the band depending on what you want, okay? So it's, it's a very easy philosophy just because if you want to see diastolic uh, dystrophy, uh, diastolic dysfunction of the heart, you want to focus more on the diastole. So you move your ECG gating to that point on the ECG where diastole starts and systole, uh, diastole starts, systole ends, and then you finish the gating at where diastole ends and systole starts. So you can get a more detailed analysis of the heart in that phase, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, does it answer the two questions that you asked? Arif? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks. Did you understand it? It's quite a simple philosophy, actually. It's a nice concept and it works very well uh, because of motion that you have to gate the ECG. Okay. So you don't acquire a huge amount of data. You specifically look into that. So it's a bit on the CT side, the same example is when you're looking at mediastinal windows. So you move your gating to the mediastinal side of the thing. Or if you're looking at lung window, you gate to the lung side of things. Or if you're looking at bone window, you gate to the bone window. So ECG gating is a dynamic technology which allows you to gate to a particular part of the cardiac cycle so that you can pick up uh, pathologies and anomalies in that area. Okay, so let's uh, start the today's session. And uh, I want to start the session first just by revising. So before I do normal, let me just tell you that whenever you see a pathology on the CT scan, okay, you have to just describe it in quite straightforward uh, manner. There is nothing complicated about the pathology. No, in the exam is all about simple, straightforward cases. Usually we will have one pathology. Sometimes you have more than one pathology, but if you have one pathology, you have to look at associated features with that pathology. For example, if you've got lymph, uh, uh, lung cancer, in the right upper lobe, you have to look at the lymph nodes in the media side. You understand that? So you have to understand the correlation of the pathology and you have to understand where to look. And the important thing, of course, is that you have to describe the pathology. Anything that you see, whether it's a nodule, it's a mass, it's a cyst, <coughs> the description remains the same, okay? And you have to start with site. So where is the location of that uh, pathology? What is the size of the pathology? Now, obviously looking at a CT, you cannot tell me exactly what is the size till you measure it. But you can always in the discussion say, it looks about two centimeters, you know, which is all right. I'm not going to hold it against you if you say, if it turns out to be 2.2 centimeters. But at least in the first description, whenever we see a pathology, we say, yeah, this is uh, about two centimeter tumor present in the right upper lobe. Uh, it is uh, circular in shape. So you have to talk about the shape. You have to talk about the surface, what it looks like. You have to talk about the margins. You have to talk about the opacification, whether it's hypodense, hyperdense, or isodense. And you have to look for some signs which are specific to that uh, pathology. But if you don't know the signs, it's okay. So anybody, to be honest, anybody can describe any CT scan. It's as simple as that. Anybody can describe any CT scan all you have to do is go through this pathway. Local, location, size, shape, surface, margins, opacifications. And then you look at consistency, okay? Talk about contrast enhancement, if it is a contrast film. Talk about calcification within that pathology, if you see some calcification. Talk about the content, anything specific that you're seeing within the uh, cyst, are you seeing, uh, are you seeing daughter cyst within the cyst or are you seeing something floating within the cyst or are you seeing fluid within the cyst? Uh, talk about the surrounding structures. So what is the effect of the cyst on the surrounding structures? Okay. Simple thing, things like there is compression of the lung parenchyma or there is erosion of the bone or the trachea is uh, obstructed or the esophagus is getting compressed. Simple things, nothing complicated, just simple things. 
talk what is the effect the structure is having on the surrounding structures and most importantly at the end talk about other normal structures either you can say everything else is normal or you talk a little bit about important normal structures so when you're talking about lung cancer and you've described a nodule in the lung cancer make a statement there is no obvious uh, lymphadenopathy seen in the mediastinum on the mediastinal window okay and then last but not the least try to reach a differential diagnosis rather than a diagnosis i would be happier if you reach a differential diagnosis because then you can discuss more things with the examiner if you reach one particular diagnosis of course you can if it's so obvious and everything is okay then you can reach a diagnosis but i would always say i'd keep this in the back of my mind my most likely diagnosis is so and so but i'll always keep this in the back of my mind okay so just quickly i'll go through these few points again so let's look at it uh, side 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 which is the location the size the shape the surface the margins the opacification any signs which are specific to the uh, lesion uh, you can talk about consistency you can talk about contrast enhancement you can talk about calcification you can talk about content you can talk about surrounding structure and you can talk about other normal structures now you do not need to go through all of this you may have all of this or you may have some of this but at least some should figure in your description do you understand that so really a ct scan is more than 90% of the times it's an ice breaker when you go into the vivas and i put up a ct scan i put it up to give you an opportunity to talk and this is the best investigation to get in the exam and don't worry about diagnosis don't worry whether you could diagnose or not diagnose as long as you describe the pathology well to me i'm quite happy and then we can have a adult discussion because frcs is an adult exam because today you pass the frcs next day you're supposed to be a qualified completely independent consultant in the uk so frcs at that level we actually have a very adult discussion with people we don't you know you don't have to tell me very little minor bits and bobs you just have to have a standard pattern of description of when i say a nodule i, I mean a pathology okay and everything everything in the chest can be described using this and if you manage to go through 10 or 12 of these points which i enumerated you already done 2 minutes or 2 and a half minutes okay and by the time i am waiting to ask you the next question doctor what are you going to do next what is the next investigations in this okay so please 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 try to understand that ct scan is the easiest of all the investigations that you will get in the exam okay and then don't forget to ask for previous scans is very important at the end of the this thing say i would like to see the previous scans because you want to talk about growth rate you do want to know if that uh, whatever that pathology has a change in size or not change in size okay so these are very very standard nothing complicated very straight forward stuff so become friends with ct scan okay think that ct scan is your best buddy in the examination it is there to help you to move to the next stage of the discussion it is not there to fail you i promise you i have never met anybody whom i have failed on a ct scan never never ever ever so just remember ct scans are your best friend in the exam okay the other thing that you have to remember is this is not just about exams okay <clears throat> this is about life uh, about your clinical practice whenever you see a chest x ray or you see a ct scan like this okay whenever you see a chest x ray or a ct scan who is putting lines on my surface don't don't fiddle around guys uh, because we are in a meeting and not a webinar you have control of my screen as well so every time you try to move things around i get a mark on this uh, surface so don't don't fiddle with your mouse and things like that okay all right so uh, what i was saying was every time you in life when you start uh, seeing patients and seeing chest x rays and seeing ct scans from now onwards okay because now you've learned how to be friends with a chest x ray you've learned how to be friends with a ct scan from now onwards whenever you see a ct scan i want you to imagine how is that tumor in real life okay i want you in your brain to create a three dimensional vision and the vision should be in color that is what i want you to create okay so if you look at this and you look at all these things inside 
these cavities inside or calcifications and various things, whatever else you see, really when you're sitting in your clinic and you're seeing the CT scan, because we are surgeons and we operate in the chest and we have a good uh, mental image of what tumors look like, so every time you look at the CT scan, every time you look at the chest X-ray, I want you to physically and mentally get an image of what is the tumor looking like in real life and what is going to be inside the tumor. So this image must form in your mind. Look at this multi-cavitatory areas. Look at this fat here. There are septae. Uh, there is some calcification here. E everything, all of this image should actually form from the CT scan. That is why the CT scan is your best friend, but you must learn to understand that the CT scan is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional pathology. The patient is three-dimensional. So always in your mind, you must try and work out what is it going to look like in real life. And if this picture doesn't come in your mind, then you have not become a good clinician, okay? So please, please, please learn to make the picture in your mind. That is the only difference between you seeing the CT scan and me seeing the CT scan. Because when I am seeing the CT scan and when I'm seeing this CT scan compressing on this vascular structure, I am able to make an image in my mind where I can see the compression on the pulmonary artery or aorta or whatever it is. Okay, so I can clearly visualize this in my mind because I have a 3D uh, training. I've trained my mind to think 3D, not 2D. Okay, all right, just one second. I'm going to log off this screen share because I don't like these lines in there. So let me stop the screen share and then restart uh, because somebody has got that. Okay, so, okay, did this make sense what I just told you guys? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. so always, yes, always, always yes. make CT scans your friend. Listen, it's the same principle as when you are batting in cricket. Okay, if any of you have played cricket at a good level, you'll realize that initially the bat is a very heavy bat. When you go into the nets after a few months and you want to bat, the bat is very heavy. It really is difficult to lift the bat and you think, how the hell can I hit a six with it? Sachin Tendulkar uses a very heavy bat. The reason why he uses a very heavy bat is because he can hit a six with it. Yeah, but for his height and for his weight of the bat, it is very heavy. But with practice, as you keep looking at things, keep looking at things again and again and again, the bat suddenly becomes lighter. And that is the difference between experience and inexperience. The bat has to become lighter and you stop thinking about the bat. At the moment, all of you guys who are struggling with CT scans are thinking about the bat. You're thinking that this is a very difficult investigation. I'm not able to understand where is the brachiocephalic artery, uh, where is the uh, subclavian artery, things like that. The, after a little while, as you keep going again and again and again to the image, all of that will go in the background and suddenly the bat will become lighter and hitting a six will become very easy. And this is the image that will come in your mind. So whenever we as seniors see this, we see a three-dimensional image. You see a two-dimensional image. And that is the difference. That is where experience comes in because I have seen thousands and thousands more CTs than you have. So I can very easily use this uh, thing to understand the three-dimensional, okay? Now, uh, now Bhushan, Yes, sir. I want you to come in, okay? Uh, yeah. Now, I'm going to give you a technique of how to learn to describe a CT. Okay. Now, Bhushan, what I want you to do, imagine, okay, imagine yeah. that you are talking to a blind man. You. You are describing to a blind man. The audience is a blind man. And the blind yeah. man has never seen this structure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what you have to do is the next picture which I put up, you start describing the structure to give mm. me, the blind man, an image of what is going on on the screen. Is that okay? Yes. Do you understand yes, what I said? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm just going to put it up. All right. Don't give me the diagnosis. No. Give me a description. 
it is an uh, insect like thing which has got uh, 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 this thing mm, butterfly shaped uh, wings with beautiful pattern over it and uh, it has got uh, legs small legs and it is sitting on a, some fruit or something um, uh, uh, globular uh, thing. Uh, uh, um, the uh, insect part is central part and its wings have a specific pattern uh, which is a, a trapezoidal in shape when combined together. And there are some veins uh, branching over uh, its uh, wings and uh, having orange color and yellow color with black uh, uh, margins. Anything about spots? Yeah, the, there are white spots at the end uh, of the wings. Uh, Anything about the object on which it is sitting? Yeah, uh, it is sitting on a uh, some uh, global or uh, uh, some one minute, rounded. Don't switch off your phone. Yeah, sir. Sorry. Some, some rounded fruit or uh, uh, something which has got small spikes or spicules uh, on it. Anything about the surrounding? Yeah, the, the surrounding looks like it is in uh, midst of a forest. Or some uh, densely uh, 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 dense forest or somewhere uh, where everywhere greenery is there and lot of plants are there. Okay, so yeah. this is exactly what you are doing when you are describing a lesion on a chest X-ray or a CT scan. Do you understand? This is for everybody. This is all that you have to do. You have to describe whatever you are seeing right in front of you, including that structure in, the, in orange, including the pattern on, the on that uh, structure, including the shape of what those wings look like. You have to describe what is on those wings, the, 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 the veins that he's spoken about. He's spoken about the color, what it looks like. He's spoken about the various spots that are present on the periphery with a nice dark black rim. He's spoken about this nodular thing on which it is sitting, which could be either a, you know, a flower stamen or it could be a fruit. Uh, it looks like it's got spicules on it. That fruit has got spicules on it. He talked about the head. He spoke about the legs. And more importantly, he spoke about the surrounding structures. Now, this description, you don't need an FRCS or a MS uh, cardiothoracic surgery or an MCH cardiothoracic surgery to do this description. Did you understand this? Everybody, did you yeah. understand this? Yes, sir. Yes. This is exactly what you're going to do from now onwards. Every time you describe a CT scan to me or to anybody for that matter, you are actually talking to a blind person who has never seen a butterfly. And the quality of your description defines the quality of the picture that is being formed in the blind person's brain. Do you understand? This is the key thing to understand. So once Bhushan has described this so beautifully, the blind man in his brain is forming a picture and he can say, this is a beautiful butterfly. Do you understand that? This is the philosophy of reading a CT scan. This is as simple as that. You don't need to be qualified. You don't need to have done a radiology degree to describe a CT scan. Is that okay? All right. Yes. Thanks, Bushan. Well done. Yes, thank you. So let's let's go to the next one, Bushan. I'm going to ask one by one, yeah. and yeah. either you can take all of it, or somebody else wants to come in. You can take it. This is just a revision. I'm not going to question you. You just tell me what is what, and then we'll just move on. Okay. I'm not going to question you. So just quickly, somebody else come in. Shilpa, come in. Hello. What's yes. this? So the right paratracheal stripe. What's this? Zygo is of age, the, in the center, the middle one, the second no, one, no, is no, the, no. Zygo one, is of age, 
Okay, okay PA. One, uh, yeah, yeah azygosophageal recess, and this is the PA, and the down fourth one is the uh, descending, uh, the continuation of the PA. Okay. Or the what descending. Area is this? What right area heart is this? border, right heart border what made by this? right vent, right atrium, cardiophrenic angle, then okay. the uh, liver. What is this? Then liver. What is this? Then the breast shadow. What is this? Uh, aortic uh, knuckle, AP, aortic knuckle, AP window, then pulmonary, pulmonary PA, left sided PA, and then we have the uh, LA, L, left atrial appendage, then the left heart border made by the uh, yeah, yeah, LV, and uh, diaphragm, then the gastric, gastric fundus. And uh, gas in the bowel. Splenic fracture. And the costophrenic angle. Uh, cardiophrenic, left cardiophrenic angle. Uh, trachea. Carina. R right main bronchus. Left main bronchus. Well done. Okay. So it's as simple as that. Okay. Now next, somebody come in. Aba come in. Yeah. What is the difference between the two and what can you highlight on this? So the left side one is a AP or a AP uh, X-ray and the right sided one is a PA X-ray. That means that uh, the, on the PA, the plate is kept in, uh, in front. Of the beam is passing from the back the uh, posterior side to the anterior side and the plate is kept in front. Uh, the difference between the AP and the PA is that uh, in the AP, the beam is uh, about a meter away and in the PA, it is 1.8 meters away. Uh, in the AP, the, uh, the structures which are uh, lying in uh, the heart shadow would appear much larger and less well-defined with uh, more hazier margins. On the PA, the heart shadow would appear clearer with sharper uh, margins. And um, ribs. in the AP, the scapula would be uh, uh, more prominently visible since the plate is lying on the back of the patient. Usually, commonly the AP, uh, yes, sir, the scapular border. Uh, usually, uh, the AP is either taken in an ICU setup where the patient might be either supine or uh, uh, sitting up. While a PA is usually taken in a clinical setup, uh, so that's that's as much as I remember. Ribs, ribs. Any difference uh, in the uh, height of the diaphragm? Yes, so the the diaphragm uh, would appear to be more flattened in the AP uh, picture as compared to the PA PA X-ray. Okay, so this is always taken in deep inspiration, and you get more ribs seen here and much higher, more lucency of the lungs. That's why you can see the cardiophrenic and costophrenic angle very sharply. Well done. Okay, so now I'm going to go through a normal CT scan and I want you to spend some time on it and we will try and identify some structures, okay? I'm going to play it for one minute, okay? This is a one minute uh, film. Just watch it, watch carefully. I don't want you to this is normal, okay? So don't worry about pathology. Just watch normally and see what you see. Thank you, Bhushan, for this. And Nikhil. Okay. Uh, come in. Uh, who's huh? next? Pitun, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, one minute. Muzaffar Ali, please switch off your phone, please. Muzaffar, please switch off your microphone. Pitun, uh, first question. Uh, what is this? It's, um, 
city was IV contrast. Okay. This is kind of the what window are you contrast. watching? What, what uh, window are you watching? I'm watching the media style window. Excellent. Okay. So not difficult. Very straightforward question, very straightforward answer. What phase of the of the uh, dye do you think was captured? Uh, it looks like arterial phase. Okay, stay there, okay? Stay there. I'm okay. going to run this again. Okay. Oh, okay. No, it's Venus. You want to change your answer or you're happy yes. with your answer? No, it's more Venus face. More Venus face. Fantastic. That's yes. very good. Okay. So that's the way you look at it. Okay. That's how you identify. Because yeah. whatever is highlighted more is, is the face. That's it's as yes. simple as that. It's nothing complicated about it. So because yeah. this is a Venus face, I'm going to ask you some things to identify the Venus structures. Okay. okay. Again, okay. I will go and I will pause and I will point out and you have to tell me what it is. Okay. Only focus on the veins. Yes. Okay. Two things are highlighted in this picture. Agree? One yes, is sir. here, which is coming across, and one is yeah. here. Agree? Okay. Yes. Now give me names for what is this and what is this. Uh, left brachiocephalic vein and the other good. one is the right brachiocephalic vein. Okay, very good. Excellent. I'm going to ask you to continue. Okay. Pause. Sorry. Oh, God. This went. Sorry, it went ahead. I want to mm -hmm. pause it. This one we will come back again. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, what is the structure that is highlighted? That's the SVC. Excellent. Good. Everybody happy with this? So far, so good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Continue yes, sir. looking at the SVC, okay? What's happening? Fitun, what's happening? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. So now we have we are seeing the zygos draining into the SVC. Very good. Excellent. Everybody happy with this? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Happy? Yes. Very clear. Okay. Okay. Fitun, continue looking at the SUC. Okay. Uh, okay. Where are you? Fitun, where are you? Okay. So we are entering the right atrium now. Excellent. Very good. Simple, isn't it? Not difficult at all. Yeah. So can you identify that one structure, which is the right atrium? Excellent. Now we go back a little bit and I want you to see the other structure that is coming into view. Okay. All right. And that is the, okay, I'll pause it. One minute. I'll pause it. One minute. Sorry, sorry. We just need to get to the correct structure. What is this coming into view below the SVC? Which is got that's the pulmonary trunk. Okay, what do you think is this one? And what do you think so is that this, will one? Be... this one? Oh, yeah. Yes, so on the right I'll side. Again. Is there... I'll play it again and I'll pause. I have to come with the correct one. Okay, just one. Minute. Okay. Identify. Oh, come on. Sorry. Sorry about that. It's just it's going silly. Ah. Sorry about that, guys. One minute. Take your time. Uh, where is it? Share. I'm still sharing, isn't it? Now the sharing has stopped. Where is share? Okay, share. Uh, this is your slide. That's the slide I want to come back in. I want to go back into slideshow. Okay, I'm going to pause at one point.
and I want you to identify two structures for me, okay? three structures actually. Okay. Identify three structures. I'll point out, okay? One, okay. two, and three. Okay, so one is the um, RPA, yep. and two is the main pulmonary artery, and okay. three will be the LPA. Excellent. Did you pelt? No. Excellent. Well done. Now, we're going to go down, okay. and I'm going to pause at one point. Okay, I'm paused here, okay? Okay. I want you to put an X through this structure, yes. like this. Put an X. What do you think is above? What do you think is below? What do you think is to the right? And what do you think is to the left? Okay. Forget so, the structure in the midline. I'm not worried about okay. that. Okay. Okay. So the one is which is below will be the left atrium. I'll point and you tell me what it is, okay? Yes. So what do you think? Okay. Left atrium. Okay, what do you think this is? That will be the right atrium. What do you think this is? That will be the RV. And what do you think this is? This would be the LV. Okay, what is the structure in between? That will be the aorta. Yeah, the aortic outlet. Okay. Aortic outlet, yes. The outlet. Very good. Easy? So far so yes. good? Okay, stay there, okay? Yeah. Stay with me and I'm going to stop at a particular point. I want to identify, I want you to identify two structures for me. Okay. Okay. There is something happening here and there was something happening here. I, I missed it. It's in the previous shot. But sometimes you get okay. both in the same shot, okay? So you see one structure coming here and one structure yes. coming here, both of them opening into this one. So what do you think okay. is that? So those are the pulmonary veins. So this one opening. is which one? That this will be the right. Be there. Okay, right. The side right pulmonary there. vein. And what do you think this is? And the left one, on the left pulmonary vein. Okay, excellent. Easy, easy? Not difficult? Yes. Okay, very good. Now let's go back, okay? Everybody okay with this understanding or do you want me to speed up? Yes, I, I no, no. Uh, it's worth spending. I'll tell you these few minutes that you spend on this will make your clinical practice for the rest of your life. I promise you. Okay. All right. Pitun, you want to stay on or you want to somebody else to take over? As you like, sir. Happy to take on? Okay. Happy to stay on? Stay on. You're doing very well. Okay, now we are going to look at the artery. Okay, this is not the arterial phase, but we are still going to focus on the artery. Okay. So stay there and I will I will direct this. <coughs> what is this structure? That so that's the aortic arch. Aortic arch, okay. How many branches come off the aortic arch? Uh, five. So we name have them. now we, we are not seeing anything now. Yeah, yeah, but name the branches coming off okay. the aortic yes. arch. Okay, so we have we'll have the right brachiocephalic and then the hmm. left common carotid, left subclavian. So that hmm. will be three, not five. five. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was waiting for the five. <laughs> yes. Which is the first branch of the aorta? Simple question. Coronary. From the aorta or the aortic arch? First branch of the aorta. The aorta will be the coronaries. Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's go back a little bit. We are going now into the arterial supply. Okay. 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 I'm going to stop here. Okay. I want you to identify one, two, and three for me. Okay. So one is the right brachiocephalic artery. And then two is the left common carotid, and three will be the left subclavian artery. Okay, well done. Simple? Okay. Yes. We're gonna keep moving ahead. And what is happening here? 
what is happening there what is the left the right brachiocephalic is doing something what is it doing so is this the, the right brachiocephalic is dividing into the yeah. right common carotid and the right subclavian excellent okay did you understand that it's already given away the subclavian and then yes. as you go further it will come back again this is not an arterial phase that is why you yes. cannot see it very clearly very clear, but yeah. if you look carefully you can see that division coming can you see that the subclavian is coming off the right common carotid uh, mm -hmm. off the right which is the, the more backward right the backward ah, one will be the backward, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go. but this is not a v arterial phase so you cannot comment on it okay okay all right if there is a lymph node here between, okay if there's a rounded structure and if there's a lymph node what will it be so yes. that will be the, the prevascular, right? Uh, no, prevascular is. Yeah. What is this? What is this structure? That's what the is trachea. This structure? Yeah, and this what is, the is the lymph node in this area? Okay, so that will be two, uh, two R. Yeah, parathecal. Right parathecal. Okay. Right parathecal. No yes. Yeah, it's right parathecal. Very very okay. easy to understand. Okay. Okay. Now we will go down a little bit more. So everybody happy with the vascular anatomy? Yes. yes. It's sir. actually as simple as that. Yes, I promise you, it's as simple as that. There is nothing complicated about the vascular anatomy. What is the structure behind it? That's the esophagus. Esophagus. Well done. Why do you call it esophagus? Why you call it esophagus? Hmm. Why do you think it's esophagus? What are the features that are telling you that this is esophagus? It's behind the trachea and it Good. is in the front so of the spine. Important. Yeah. Yes, what and uh, there is a, looks like muscular tube with an opening Excellent. inside. Excellent. Yeah. And with what inside? There is air inside. Air <laughs> inside. That's right. Not so open. Yes. Easy. Anything difficult yes. about this so far? No. Okay. All right. Now, the next CT. Uh, thank you, Fitun. You've done very well. Thank okay. you, sir. What is thank this you. area called? As this area? This is the aorta. Pulmonary. Okay, good. Aorta pulmonary. Aorta pulmonary good. is okay. Yeah. What 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 is the lymph node station of this uh, window? Uh, it will be four. No, not four. Five. 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 Okay. Aorta five. pulmonary yeah. is five and six it's is five. Para aorta. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. So easy enough. So far, so good. Where you would I, see the para aorta one, if you're looking here? Uh, here, in front of this. Okay. Here or here. Okay, wherever okay. those are all six, or at the arch, just in front of the arch is six. Again, one more question. Okay. okay, one more question. One more question. Okay. okay. What, what is this? It's the carina. Good. And what station is there? We so subcarina will be seven. Good. Easy. Not yes. difficult. Okay. What will be the lymph node in this area? So that will be higher. Right. Number? So right higher will be uh, higher will be 10. ten. Good. So 10 and 10, right and left. Okay. Is it easy? Right and left, yes. Nothing difficult about looking at a CT scan as long as you're looking at it in a systematic way. So very easy to understand all the vascular anatomy, very easy to understand all the lymph nodes and easy to understand the airways. Okay. Nothing complicated about this CT scan. So far, so good. Everybody happy? Yes. Okay, yes. now Adnan asked me a question yes. yesterday to explain uh, about uh, about uh, the uh, lung uh, lobes. He wanted to know the lung lobes, okay? Adnan, yes. are you on online? Adnan? Yes, sir. Are you online? Okay, Adnan, now yes. I will take you first look at this CT scan, okay? Just see it, don't do anything more. For one minute, just see it, uh, hoping that this is the correct CT scan. One minute, I don't know that. No, sorry, I'll use the next one. This one, okay, Adnan? Uh, uh, don't, yes, don't fiddle with the screen, just watch it, okay? All right. Everybody just watch it.
Happy? Adnan happy? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Now Adnan, come in and tell me what is this structure? So this is trachea. Good. Well done. Okay. Now, everybody only look at the trachea. Don't look anywhere else. Okay. Only look at the trachea. Adnan, what is happening here? Uh, this is crina and trachea is dividing into right and left main bronchus. Okay, happy with that? Easy enough? Yes. Okay, now look at the right main bronchus. And Adnan, can you see something going off the right main bronchus? It's a bit early, but it is there very clearly. Can you see this? Yes or yes, no? Sir. Yes, sir. What do you think that is? What, what is the first branch of the right main bronchus? So right upper and right... Uh... Excellent. No, no, no. Just right upper. Don't go oh. and. The first branch of the right of the of the right main bronchus is right upper lobe. Agree? Yes, sir. Happy or not happy? Yes, sir. Happy. So everything that is being distributed by this bronchus is the upper lobe. Okay. okay. Are you with me? Okay. Yes, sir. I am with you. Keep watching. Keep watching. After the right upper lobe bronchus has gone off, what is the bronchus called as? The right floor? No. There's another name. Lobar bronchus. No. Intermediate. Bronchus okay. intermediate. Bronchus intermediate. Bronchus intermediate. intermediate. Okay. So after the right upper lobe bronchus has gone off, still the middle hasn't gone off. The lower lobe hasn't gone off. You still got what is called as the bronchus intermediate. Okay. Adnan, are you okay? Yes, sir. Okay, now watch it, okay? Watch it carefully. What's happened there? Can you see something going off? Yes, sir. Okay, that is the <clears throat> middle lobe. Okay. Sir. I'll tell you why. Because in a bronchoscopy, you look from the head towards the bottom. In CT scan, you're looking from the bottom towards the head. So if you know your bronchoscopy, you will know that in a bronchus intermediates, in a bronchoscopy, at 3 o'clock is, uh, is the middle lobe bronchus. Take it from me. I'm just telling you this. That at 3 o'clock is the middle lobe bronchus. So here, it is at 9 o'clock. It's gone off diametrically opposite. So this is the middle lobe bronchus. Okay, Adnan? Are you with okay. me? Yes, Forget sir. the o'clock. Okay, I'm sorry I said that. Forget the o'clock. Just the next branch after the right upper lobe bronchus that you see is bronchus intermediate. The bronchus intermediate divides into middle lobe bronchus and everything that it is supplying is middle lobe. Can you see this? Yes, yes sir. Clear? Absolutely clear? And then yes, sir. follow the rest of the bronchus. What do you think this is? This is the lower lobe bronchus with the apical segmental coming up and common basal coming up. So apical segmental going this way. So this will become apical segmental and this is going here. So this will become common basal. Did you understand that? It's as easy as that. So you cannot. Yes, now, now, let me just play this through and then I will restart. And again, keep looking on the right side. Okay, I'm going to go back. Keep looking at the right side and tell me, without looking at the bronchus, can you tell me where the upper lobe is, middle lobe is, or lower lobe is? Don't look at the bronchus, look at the lung only. Honestly, can you tell me which is the upper lobe, middle lobe, or lower lobe? Yes, sir. You can? <laughs> I can't. So usually the point I'm trying to make is that if you look at the parenchyma of the lung, the fissures okay. are never well defined. Okay, there are few patients whom the fissure is well defined, and you can make out what is upper, which is middle, which is lower. Most of the patients is almost impossible to know which is upper lobe, middle lobe, or lower lobe. Okay, so all okay. you have to do is look at the trachea and follow the trachea. Okay, so I'm going to do the right side once again. Okay, Adnan, just follow it. In your own mind, you make your decisions and see what's happening, okay? Focus, focus, focus on the trachea, focus on the trachea, focus on the trachea. Did you see that upper lobe bronchus going off? Yes, sir. 
Yeah, so that's the upper lobe. So this is all upper lobe. Can you see this okay. spread? All of this is upper lobe. Okay, sir. As you go ahead, next branch is coming off. That's middle middle lobe. So this is all middle lobe. Okay. Yeah. And then yes. The next one that's coming off is the lower lobe. So this is all lower lobe. Okay. Sir. Did you understand? That's the way you decide the tumor is in the upper lobe, middle lobe, or lower lobe. Is it? Is it? It's as simple as that. Okay. Are you okay. happy with that? Now we yes, go sir. back to the left side. I'm not focus on the left side. Focus on the left side. Only uh, focus on the trachea. Sorry, focus on the trachea. What's happened, Adnan? Yes, sir. It is dividing. It is dividing to right and left. Right and left main. Okay, agreed. Now yes, sir. Focus on the left main bronchus. Don't look anywhere else. Just look in the left main bronchus. What has happened? Sir, it is dividing to left. Here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Left upper lobe, and if I go one section ahead, you will see the lower lobe. Can you see that? So this yes. is all upper lobe. Everything that you saw is upper lobe from the top to the bottom. The lower lobe is this side. All of this is the lower lobe. And actually, if you look at the vascular distribution, there is a definite, definite change in the direction. This one is coming this way. That one is going that way. So somewhere here will be the fissure in this line. So this becomes the lower lobe. Because here is the bronchus of the lower lobe. And that is all still upper lobe. This has become lingula because you can see that. And watch the lingula thing. Watch this, okay? And see how low it is going. Oh, shit. Come on. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry. So this is still lingula. Can you see that? Can you see yes, this sir. is still lingula? This is lingula, part of the upper lobe. Very, very clear uh, understanding. As long as you know where the bronchus is going, there is nobody, nobody can, um, you know, misguide you. Is this clear now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Did you you the lingula is going down. Last question. Yeah, the, the lingula is going downwards. So I'll go back again. One second. Let me just come here. So this is the upper lobe coming off. Here you can, if you look carefully, you can see a fissure because the distribution is different. So this is the lower, the apical segment, apical segment of the lower lobe that's coming into view. Just watch that carefully. This is lower lobe here. This is lower lobe. So this is all lower lobe. If you look carefully, you can see the fissure there. This is still the lingula of the upper lobe. So there is a overlapping there. Okay. See there? Can you see that? This is still lingula of the lower lobe. Can you see that? Just yeah, I can see the fissure. Back one second. You can see the fissure here. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So upper yeah. lobe, lower lobe, right upper lobe, right middle lobe, right lower lobe. This is the way to identify. You cannot identify it on the basis of where it is, because the lung changes. Okay. Some sometimes the upper lobe is bigger, the middle lobe is smaller, the apical segment of the lower lobe goes up. It's very difficult until and unless you look at the bronchial anatomy. You cannot decide which lobe of the lung is the tumor in. You understand that? So you have to 10 times go up and down and keep looking at the bronchial anatomy. And that will help you to identify where the lesion is. Happy with that? Everybody happy with that? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, it's yes. very clear now. This is the key thing. Okay. All right. So let's now get into the pathology. Thank you, Adnan. Well done. Thank uh, you, sir. Let's get into the pathology. Somebody else come up. Who wants to come up? Uh, is... Uh, who the Ramaswamy is in the room? Ramaswamy, are you in the room? Hello. Okay. Somebody else is Ramaswamy in the room or not? Hello. You don't want to take part? Okay. Next, who who else is in the room? Somebody just say I want to talk. We have to move fast, guys. Otherwise, we'll waste. Sir, time. Sir, yes, sir. Sir, Bishwarup here, sir. I can. Bishwarup, come in. Okay. Bishwarup, come in. I am not quizzing you. This is not an exam. I'm just using you to describe what you're seeing. Okay, please do not misunderstand. I'm no. not here to quiz you. Okay, Mr. Rup, no. come in. And uh, yes, I'll just quickly tell you a little bit about lung cysts. There's unifocal pulmonary lung cysts, or there is multifocal pulmonary lung cysts. You got to be able to identify each one of it looks a bit different. So there's a whole list of diagnoses that comes with lung cysts. Mr. Rup, come in the room. 
and yes, tell me a description of what is happening uh sir it is a there are multiple cysts in uh, both the lungs sir one uh, minute bisur one minute can can i stop you for a second is there anything yes, wrong with this picture not the pathology of the thing but the picture itself is there something wrong in the picture is there something more you wanted before you started talking sir i cannot uh, see the heart shadow and i don't know i mean maybe <laughs> even before that even before that bisur ji Can I, see before that, of, can, can I see an X-ray of the same pathology? No. Uh, okay, that's acceptable. But this shot, what is wrong with this shot? Before you start reading this shot, what is it that you want to confirm? Labeling. Sir, there is no side mentioned, right? Identifiers. Already. Identifiers. You have to look for identifiers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So in the exam, they will take away the identifiers, but you have to say. you know in in life in real life before you start looking at the pathology in front of you always look for identifiers and look for sign okay yes. does that make sense what i just said yes yes okay good so look for identifiers look for the sign okay uh, again now start describing this just it's a snapshot uh, describe that butterfly and the and the uh, pollen to me uh so this is a uh... CT scan of the uh, CT scan of the thorax showing both the lungs. Uh, it is in coronal plane and it is showing that there are multiple cysts in both the right and the left lung. Okay. Anything else you want to talk? The vascular yeah. structures are. I delineated so it is a contrast in and CT scan. Yeah, good. What window? What window? Uh, sir, this is a uh, this is a lung window, sir. Good. It's easy. It's lung window. We are, we are trying to see lung window. Good. Okay. So just describe something to me. You no, know? just describe what you're seeing. I like that the multiple cysts you said. Which are present? Yes. What upper lobe? Bilateral Middle lobe, right, left, where? The multiple lobes are present uh, bilaterally. Uh, in the right side, it is present in the upper lobe, middle lobe, and the lower lobe. The left side also it is present uh, in the upper lobe, but less in the lower lobe. Okay, yeah, fine. I mean that's all right. I will accept that. But actually, even the lower lobe is gone on the left side. so this is a multiple distributed uh, pan cystic uh, appearance of the yes. lung uh, talk a little bit about the vascularity if you want anything specific about the vascularity anything more or less or anything any comments or you can say mm -hmm. that i can't comment it's okay so i can't make out the uh, right pulmonary artery mm -hmm. the the the, the beginning of the right pulmonary artery very nicely the, the, yeah but look 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 into the into the lung i'm not talking about this this you cannot see because the section is not going through there i'm talking about this anything is there more vascularity less vascularity sir uh, there is less vascularity sir because i cannot see the vascular structures all over i mean i can see the contrast so there is more central opacification of the vascularity but periphery i think the vascularity is gone down right yes sir. happy with that Okay, everybody happy with that? It's a very basic description, but it tells you what do you think is the diagnosis here? Uh, multiple cystic lesion of bronchitis. Uh, just wait, just wait. Let 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 this be okay. There is just everybody else similarity. switch off your phone, please. Switch off the microphones, please. Yeah, what do you think it is? Just, just give sir, me a sir, couple of dials. I don't mind. Sir, there, you don't have to be right. This room, you don't have to be yes, right. Sir, sir there is a honey, honeycomb appearance of the lung. I mean, lovely. Uh, I like that. I love the word honeycomb. You're right. Give me a couple uh, of it, diagnoses on this. It, 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 it could be, it could be a bilateral um, bronchiectasis of the lung, sir. bilateral bronchiectasis of the lung okay anything else you know of any other congenital disease or uh, particularly more common in women 
which might give you this picture mm. not very common but you you have to have you treated young women with pneumothorax have you operated on a young woman with pneumothorax it's a straight forward yeah, question not no. not a trick no, question no 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 sir no, no sir but have you seen anybody do it a young women with you know you do bullectomy and pleurectomy uh, we, we you have do we have we have i have seen why, why do you do. why do you send the lung for histopathology mm, to make out uh, to make out whether 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 it is a bola or whether it is something else sir i mean whether there yeah, is sure. a... so what are you thinking of this is not fair to you uh, biswarup this is not a straight forward uh, ct scan unfortunately it's the first one which came up no, it's but fine, but uh, it's it's quite a good understanding this is sir, actually sir, a condition sir, called sir, as sir, to see whether it is a uh, maybe there are these are pneumothorax or a kind of any cavitary lung disease okay uh, good yeah i'm happy with that okay. i'm happy or can it's, be, it's actually or can be, or, Look at the CT scan, everybody. Look at the CT scan, everybody. It's a honeycomb appearance, multiple cystic, present in all the lobes of the lung, bilaterally affecting both the lobes, with loss of vascularity in the periphery, congestion in the center. The first thing that's going through my mind is: Is this a disease called as lymphangiomyomatosis? Yes. Also think yes. about other diagnoses like bronchiectasis or congenital cystic malformations within the lung. But this X-ray, everybody look at it. It is actually the classic example of lymphangiomyomatosis. It's okay, Mister. You don't have to make a diagnosis. You have to make multiple differential diagnoses. I'm very happy with what you told. Okay, excellent. Very well done, Mister. Next, who wants to come in? Lymphangioleomyomatosis, okay, okay, called as LAM, L-A-M, okay. Sorry, this was the most difficult CT scan of the whole of the lot. Unfortunately, no, 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 no. it came up no, no, no. as first one, okay. But it's just so classical that you keep it in mind. I'm showing this for you to keep it in mind, okay. Next one. Yes, yes. Okay. You, next one. Who's who wants to come in next? Anybody can come. Simran, you can come in. <clears throat> You're a pediatric cardiac good surgeon. Good evening, sir. Simran, are you in? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Can you hear me, sir? Pediatric cardiac surgeon. Okay. This right, is so a this shot is... which I've thrown at you. What do you just describe it first? Right, sir. So, so this is a, a CT scan, a, a contrast from an CT scan. There are no um, uh, descriptive markers uh, on the CT scan, but the uh, scan shows uh, there's a multi-lobulated, separated lesion on the right side, uh, causing mass effect and shift of the medial side into the left hand side. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. The, I'll show you another shot of this. Okay. Same CT scan. Keep talking. Uh, so the CT scan is a transfer section uh, uh, at the level of the, the level of the heart, showing the uh, lesion uh, located to the um, the posterior aspect of the right uh, right lung. And it is uh, again lobulated with the septations and uh, strands present in the cavity and causing medial spinal shift to the left hand side. Most important thing is it's causing medial spinal shift. That's what I want you to tell me. Okay. Any differential diagnosis? Is there um, peripheral enhancement in this? Yes, I agree with you. There is evidence of peripheral enhancement because lung has collapsed and consolidated in that area. It is consolidating, collapsing and consolidating the normal lung. I agree with you. There is enhancement, peripheral enhancement. Excellent. What do you think this is? Give me a few diagnoses. Uh, so most diagnoses would be uh, uh, multi-lobulated abscess. Okay. Uh, it can be uh, um, uh, emphysema. Okay. With the bullous lung disease. Okay. Um, so can this be cystic fibrosis? Mm, probably not because cystic fibrosis is more generalized. This is localized to a lobe. Can you right. see? If you look carefully, see there's a fissure here. Can you see this fissure? Right. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. this lobe is completely normal. Mm. Fair enough, sir. Yes, sir. This lung is completely normal. Yes, sir. But it is localized for some reason to this lobe. You agree with me or no? Yes, sir. So what do you think? Think of some diagnosis. I'm happy with everything that you've said. Aspiration pneumonia. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
yeah uh, what else what sir av malformation so what if i told you this is a this is a two year old child c cam diaphragmatic bug congenital diaphragmatic congenital adenoid adem- 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 malformation not sure yeah c cam c cam yes, this sir. feature is classical of c cam yes, because it is actually multi loculated yes. multi cystic with peripheral enhancement compressing the lobe it is restricted to one lobe not going into the other lobes other lobes are normal and it the hyperinflation is causing a mediastinal shift the heart is shifted to the right and if in a pediatric age group i would think more of cecam rather than a hernia i agree with you you could think of hernia if if you saw more sections uh, but like i said you have to give differential diagnosis so i am not disagreeing with any of the differential diagnosis that you that you gave but i wa- what i want you to understand is how to describe these things okay so a beautiful description i really liked it is everybody okay Thank with this so did you understand yes yes, yes. is yes. it making yes. sense yes. destroyed left uh, right lock syndrome very differential uh, yeah gibral destroyed right uh, lobe yeah secondary to tuberculosis possible i'm, yeah. I'm okay with it you have to give a differential diagnosis and then you have to do further testing to decide what exactly this is okay so i'm okay with it because you don't know the clinical history at this moment so because you don't know the clinical history in an exam this is what happens i put up a uh, only one shot of the of the ct scan and you have to talk about it or if i've got a a screen with me i will take you through the top to the bottom a top to the bottom is more easier to understand but the one thing you must not do in the exam is keep fiddling with the mouse okay don't keep going up down up down up down that really irritates uh, the examiner look at it let it go from top to the bottom uh, bottom to the top and stop don't fiddle with the mouse and then please stop at the most relevant shot of the pathology and start describing the pathology again you are describing that butterfly to me it could be a moth it could be a dragonfly the quality of the diagnosis will depend on how well you describe the the insect to me you understand that that's the point i'm trying to make that's why i threw the first film so for you to understand that what you're doing in a ct scan is just describing to a blind man what you're seeing on the screen and there is no reason why you cannot describe so please do not fear the radiology in the exam all you have to do is just start describing a b c d e i showed you what to say size shape uh, you know consistency margin etc you may not say all of it but some of it if you say and if you come up with two or three sensible diagnoses then i'm okay with that if somebody tells me that this is a this could be a, a lung cancer i will not argue with you because who knows it could be a multi cystic lung cancer possible but less likely more likely to be c cam in a two year old child i like the answer of hernia because you cannot see everything from top to bottom but this looks as if it's more invading into the lung it's part of the lung rather than part of a you cannot see a sac if if it's a hernia then you would actually see a sac surrounding it so so hernia is less likely more likely a lung pathology okay so c cam this is a c cam happy with this yes sir yes sir okay yes. vikas coming anybody can come in whoever wants to i don't mind yes sir yeah vikas come in yes sir uh, this is this, yes this is the unidentified uh, un- 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 identified ct scan uh, non contrast ct with lung window uh, this ct is showing uh, multiple cystic lesions in the right lung uh, these are distributed mostly in the posterior aspect of the posterior aspect of the lung are they in a single lobe or more than one lobe i can see one fissure going there and the okay just so in both the both above and below this both above and so, below the fissure sir good so it is, good. it is in both the lungs both the lobes okay. sir what is proximal 
Any description you want to do of proximal something happening? What is this area? Can you see this? There this are is okay. Multiple, uh, probably there is some some uh, lesion which is obstructing the airway. Sir. Or is it peribronchial? It's peribronchial fibrosis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to describe with us? Compensate. Uh, no. Rest of the lung. Rest of the of the lung. of the lung. Rest of the lung. Rest of the lung. the 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 that's it. Uh, Anything sir, else? On the other side? Side. Yeah, hey, wait there, please. We can't do it like this. We can't do it like this. Only one person answer, please. Because we've got hundred people on the on the meeting. We cannot have everybody talking. Just one person answer. Vikas. Yeah. On the other side. Yeah, other side is other side. The left leg is hyperinflated. Okay, that's good. And what else? Anything else you want to comment? What is this? Anything? Just say something about it, Vikas. Just describe the butterfly to me. Atelectric changes, fibrotic bands. Use any word. I don't mind what you want to describe. But this is not normal lung. You agree with me or no? This is normal lung, but this is not normal. So there is evidence of some atelectric fibrotic changes in the other side as well. Uh, what is the diagnosis, Vikas? Give me more than one diagnosis, it's OK. Are you with me or no? Vikas seems to have gone. Uh, Shilpa, come in and give me a couple of diagnoses. Uh, hello. So, so uh, what do you think? Just it should be pin. Okay, uh, cystic congenital cystic bronchitis is involving the right lung because Why there are multiple because there are multiple pin walled cysts. So it should not be inflammatory or post tubercular ones. Hence, we can say that it could be. Uh, my, my suggestion to you, Ilf, uh, Shilpa, in an exam is don't overdiagnose and don't try to jump into the uh, deep well. Okay. My, if uh, somebody asked me what is the diagnosis, I would say more likely to be bronchitis. It's as simple as that. Bronchitis. Okay. Yeah, I would just use the word bronchitis. I would not go into congenital bronchitis and things like that because then you are, you, you know, unless and until you know the feature. That's different. But in a standard clinical examination, if I saw this, I would say this is more likely to be bronchitis. I'd like a good clinical history and I would like to examine the patient before I would uh, say anything. I would also like to see the chest x-ray of this patient. Okay? Simple. Mm -hmm. Simple. Nothing, nothing complicated. This is cystic bronchitis. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Okay? Make sense? Okay. Just stay yes. simple. I'm yes. teaching you to stay simple. What happened because you went yes. away? I have some lousy internet connection, sir. Okay, yes, right. Don't worry about it. That, we'll accept that as your excuse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Next one. Next one. Who is next? Come in quickly. I don't know who is there. Somebody just say yes. Nikhil, come in. Yes, sir. Just describe what you're seeing in front of you. By the way, just stop, Nikhil. Everybody, is it making sense? Yes. Or is it going too slow? Yes, sir. I'm very happy, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And describe everything myself, but that's not what yes, this no, session no, is about. Perfect. Okay, yes, yes, you're happy perfect. with that? Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. Describe to me what you see. Uh, so this is a uh, PA view, uh, PA, uh, this is a chest view, uh, well centralized, and there is a uh, hyperlucent shadow is seen in. Right, uh, 
right right lung mid zone okay uh it's well defined yeah uh, well de- irregular but well defined shadow okay. yeah uh, without any calcification mm mm-hmm. mm Anything else? What about the rest of the lung? Talk uh, about it. Talk about the kind of thing. You've described this. Don't stop. If you're describing that butterfly to me, you have to talk about the background. You have to talk about the garden. You have to talk about the flower on which it is sitting. Okay. So talk about this also, no? Ah uh, yes, sir. So uh, trachea is in central po- uh, position uh, without any uh, filling defect. No, all I would say is rest of the lung appears no. to be normal because we are actually adults now. Yes, okay. sir. The rest of the lung appears to be normal with cardiophrenic, costophrenic angles uh, being normal. Okay. Yes, sir. And the cardio th- yes, sir. and the cardiothoracic ratio appears to be normal. Okay. Yes, That's it. It's very simple. Give me some uh, diagnosis on this, Nikhil. Uh, sir, What is uh, coming to your mind? uh cystic lesion or okay, a good very good i'm very happy with that uh malignant uh, malignancy no no give me some diagnosis for cystic lesions no first uh sir i uh, as a simple lung cyst hydatid cyst uh do you think this is hydatid cyst no no so don't talk about it what are the simple lung cysts that you know of bada abscess simple lung cysts come on guys lung abscess lung abscess okay one lung abscess what else what are the common lung cysts that you know of it's not a difficult question Bronchogenic Bronchogenic cyst. Bronchogenic cyst. Bronchogenic cyst. I'm happy with that. Anything else? Anything else? Is it close to the pericardium? Pericardial cyst. Pericardial cyst. Yeah, it could be pericardial. We don't no. know that. On a chest x-ray, we don't know that. What you need is, what is the next investigation you want, Nikhil? Uh, I'd like to have uh, a CCT chest yeah. with contrast. No, before that. Old before chest that, x-ray. Uh, old Let, chest x-ray. lateral. Good. I want to see the less old chest X-ray, and if I gave you one investigation to do, what is the next investigation you will do? Somebody just said it. A lateral view X-ray. Sir. Lateral view. Thank you very much. So you will do a lateral view to see the relation of that cyst or mass. It could be still malignancy. We don't know that. There is still a shadow there. The features don't look malignant because it looks pretty uh, well rounded. but it could be malignancy we don't know that okay so this is a normal simple bronchogenic cyst the reason why i think this is bronchogenic cyst is because of the lucent cystic lucency and the presence medially most likely bronchogenic cysts come in the midline towards the mediastinum okay they can be peripheral as well but more likely to be bronchogenic cyst or a pericardial cyst that is what i'm thinking of okay all right describe this one can you say can you say, with me. Can you say uh... Yeah, Vitun. What do you want to call it? Sorry, could you say a uh, sequestration for that one, for the X-ray one? Possible. Anything is possible on a chest X-ray. Very difficult to say that, but okay. cyst is more common because the consistency was more cystic. Okay. Okay, Nikhil, stay with me and just describe this one to me. Uh, same patient. Yes, sir. This is the mediastinal window of the same patient with uh, with arterial face contrast. Ar- uh showing well defined cystic lesion in the right uh, right uh, side of the um, chest uh having uh, smooth uh, the smooth surface and uh, uh hypo uh, isodens uh, throughout isodens and having the same consistency throughout the lesion seems to be okay uh, re, uh without any uh, lymphadenopathy 
mid uh, without any limb pedal pathy uh, talk talk limb pedal pathy i wouldn't jump on at the moment because you're not talking malignancy you're still talking lots of benign things talk about surrounding structures no pressure effects is there any pressure effect it is slightly abutting on the uh, carina sir yeah so it is close to the right main bronchus okay what yes, else any other pressure effects or there are no pressure effects on what it is also abutting the svc sir slightly abutting the svc right. right so there are no pressure effects on the svc that's what i'm trying to tell you that it's abutting the svc but doesn't seem to be compressing the svc uh, it's lying uh, very close to the uh, right main bronchus uh there is some irregularity of the of the margins if you look carefully here but that could be also related to the to the uh, compression that is causing on the on lung, the uh, lung and more importantly what is this what is happening here can you see calcification yeah, either calcification or increase contrast contrast okay yes, so the contrast rim is being taken off we don't know that at the moment calcification is usually more dense a uh, contrast is more likely so contrast. there is some increased contrast, contrast and take up at the rim of the of the cyst diagnosis quickly bronchogenic cyst yeah good i'm happy with that simple it's very simple okay my first diagnosis probably is a bronchogenic cyst any other cyst you want to call it sir since it cannot be pericardial cyst on the pericardium i am very well it is it could be a pericardial cyst we don't know that because we haven't seen the up and down images okay so it could be more than one things but it's very easy to identify that this is a cystic lesion present in the right chest the right main bronchus with no evidence of obstructive pathology within the lung my first diagnosis probably is a bronchogenic cyst okay so there, there are few I mean, there are few solid areas in the in the cystic uh, maybe maybe you're right maybe you're right if you look carefully maybe you're right but it's very difficult to say this on a single shot okay so you could say it i will not challenge you okay all right okay can it be esophageal duplication cyst stop 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 it cannot be esophageal duplication cyst let me go back because it is it is okay, esophagus is here Look here Sorry. is the esophagus. Can you see that? Sorry. Here, it's not there. But if, if you want to call it, you can call it. But usually, esophageal duplication is. We'll come to that. Just be patient. Next, somebody describe this. Who is next on the room? Quickly, let's move fast, guys. This should finish fast. Sir, yeah. Arif, sir. Solid lesion. I, I, I would like to describe it. Describe this quickly. Uh, sister, this is a. Come on, quickly. This is a chest X-ray. Uh, this is a CT scan, uh, mediastinal view showing uh, 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 the uh, bilaterally homogeneous uh, air, air, uh, bilaterally homogeneous uh, lung fields uh, with uh, uh, cardiac shadow. Uh, the there is a tumor just uh, adjacent. To, there is a homogeneous opacity just adjacent anterior and adjacent to the. cardiac shadow uh, it is single uh, with a single cystic solitary uh, retro uh, ret i mean uh, retrosternal just below the anterior uh, right sided cartilages and uh, it seems to be homogeneous it seems uh, to be and uh, the bilateral lung fields are barrel shaped it can't, so the patient might be emphysematous emphysematous but i need the mediastinal window uh, to Uh, say say comment further about the lung fields and uh, arif arif don't over diagnose don't over talk okay just you see something here it's quite clear you described it beautifully the only thing that you didn't tell me is the relation to this yes sir there is no there is it's adjacent to the uh, anti rv i mean uh, uh, rv uh, shadow of the cardiac it's What is abutting the, the RV? pericardium so it might be attached to the pericardium there is no there is a, okay. I, i can't comment on it sir but there seems to be uh, yeah. it seems to be coming from the pericardium okay good what do you think is the potential diagnosis give me couple uh, of potential diagnosis. two diagnosis uh, anterior mediastinal tumor uh, the diagnosis most commonly in this will be i will suspect a pericardial cyst followed by a small thymoma uh, uh, maybe a retrosternal th th thyroid that has that is present uh, retrosternal th retro no, retrosternal no, no. thyroid uh, thymoma uh, lymphomas it can be a teratoma also 
don't get into that conversation. This is a cystic uh, component. It could be a thymic cyst. I agree with you. It could be a bronchogenic cyst, possibly. It could be a pericardial cyst. Those are the only things that are coming to my mind, okay? The margins are nice and smooth. I'm not thinking in terms of malignancy. This is just a simple pericardial cyst, okay? The answer is obvious facing you. In the exam, you try to make it more complicated by talking about things which are not there. So don't talk about emphysema and barrel shape and all that. This is, just, this is what happens in an exam, okay? This is just simple. I just put it up for you. All I want you to talk is describe this cyst to me, describe its relation to the structure surrounding it, and give me one or two diagnoses. That's it. Okay? That's what you do in life, isn't it? So yes, don't over-diagnose. <laughs> don't over-diagnose. Don't diagnose emphysema or barrel-shaped chest and all that. There is a pathology staring at you in the face. Just please describe the pathology. Is this clear? Yes, also, now you can see what mistakes you make in an exam where you try to over-diagnose and tell me more things which are not important. I'm being your friend. I'm just putting up a very simple image in front of you. Just describe that image. Tell me one or two answers. That's it. Okay? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Sorry, sir. Okay, don't over-talk. Please don't over-talk. Okay? Very important. Okay, somebody tell me what is this. Quickly, somebody else. Come in quickly. I can't waste so much time. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Who's next? I can't. Uh, Bhushan, come in. You're my fall, fall yeah. back guy. You the coronal uh, view of uh, MRI of chest. I'm so it is in a T2 weighted, T2 weighted image uh, okay. with Very showing well-defined, uh, uh, enhanced, uh, smooth margin, single, uh, cystic lesion in uh, right pericardiac uh, region uh, uh, at the level of uh, heart, the four chamber view of heart. Uh, so, my differential diagnosis would be a thymic cyst, pericardial cyst, or a bronchogenic cyst. Excellent. I'm very happy. Very well done. Important thing is it's in relation to the pericardium. Can you see that very clearly? Pericardium. Exactly pericardium. In relation to the pericardium. See this pericardium coming here and then there is a break here. Yes. So it is actually in relation to the pericardium, but I'm I'm really happy with your description. Excellent description. Yes. Well done, Bhushan. Okay, this is a pericardial cyst. And I am very happy you picked up that this was not a CT but an MRI. So well done. Okay, somebody come in. Quickly, quickly, guys. Can I come in again? Pitun. Who is that? Yeah. Pitun, come in. Yes. So it's a um, mediastinal, the chest CT scan, mediastinal window. We don't have identification. So we can see a uh, homogeneous opacity at the posterior mediastinum uh, behind the trachea with uh, some compression uh, on the trachea, causes, causing narrowing and slit. Like the trachea shape has been changed to oval shape. Uh, Excellent. Uh, hemithoraces, they don't seem equal on this view. So we okay. see right hemithoraces as if more volume than the left hemithoras. We need to okay. see other views to identify. Uh, Give so, me differential diagnosis. Okay, could be neuroendocrine tumor because it's in the posterior cystic. It is cystic. cystic. So first oh, talk yeah. about cyst uh, rather than cystic tumor. Lesions. So it is a cyst. You okay. agree it's a cyst or no? Yes, so like talk said, about the cyst. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Give me one or two differential diagnosis quickly. Cystic I don't argue with you about neuroendocrine tumors and all that, but just what is the first diagnosis in that area? Esophageal dilatations. Yeah, yeah. esophageal duplication yeah. cyst, number one. Number yeah. two, bronchogenic cyst. Bronchogenic. Oh, I'm happy with that. If you tell bronchogenic, me bronchogenic here, could okay. be a bronchogenic cyst or could be an esophageal duplication cyst. I'm very yeah. happy. Yeah. Okay. Or esophageal dilatation. Sorry, who? Can is you that? say esophageal dilatation? Is it acceptable? Just no, no, this is not esophageal dilatation. No. This is not. There is a cystic lesion here. There is yes. no. You cannot see no, the esophagus no. here. The esophagus no. is somewhere in there. Mm. This is not esophageal yeah. dilatation, because okay. the thing that you see in esophageal dilatation is air. Yes. There is always air in an esophagus, okay? Here, this yeah. is a cyst, this is not esophagus. 
Yeah. All right. And so I do not agree. Bronchogenic can happen the... posterior. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm bronchogenic okay. can be anywhere in the body. That's the problem. So bronchogenic, this can be. This can be. My first diagnosis would be esophageal duplication cyst. My second diagnosis okay. would be bronchogenic cyst. Okay. As simple as that. That is how the exam mm -hmm. is held. It is okay. very simple. It is not complex. Mm -hmm. Don't over diagnose things. This is beautiful, Pitun. Excellent explanation. Okay. Thank Somebody you. else come in quickly, quickly. Come on. Let's not waste time on this. Uh, who's next? Who's there? Ramaswamy, are you there or not? Or you're not part of the discussion? Uh, sir. Sashikaran coming. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Describe this to me. This is a, seems to be a non contrast uh, CT. Uh, Good. In the prevascular area, there is a uh, solid lesion with a peripheral rim of calcification just in front of the arch of aorta. Yeah, let, let me just stop you for a second. That calcification is a line which we have put. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I put it uh, there. So sorry. I was that. scared actually. Uh, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's in, it's in the prevascular but, area. But uh, let me help you. Let me help you. Be that, was, that is not there. Uh, <laughs> homogeneously uh, iso isodense kind of lesion. What is it? Give me an answer. Uh, probably at the time exist. Hmm. I'm happy um, with that. Okay. I'm happy um, with that. That's simple. I, it could be time exist. Uh, it's just also. quite so obvious in that area. Mm. Okay. All right. Somebody else now. Come in. Who is next? I don't know who else is there. I can't remember all the names, but somebody just quickly come in. Sir, Anuj. Anuj, come in. Anuj, come in. Yes, sir. Take this, please. This looks like a chest x ray uh, PA view, sir, because cardiac shadows are well defined. And in the right uh, lower zone, we can see a cystic cavitary lesion. Very with the uh, air fluid level uh, and uh, uh, cystic cavity can be seen, margins are well seen. And the base of the cavity, there is a fluid, uh, maybe an abscess. Mm. Differential diagnosis. And uh, hydrated cyst. Okay. So describe the uh, lung abscess. Yes. Talk a little bit more about hydrated. There are a few features you can see here. Yeah. Yes, this is very classic. That's why I want you to describe a few features. Water lily signs, sir. Water so lily signs. Sign, sign. mm. Okay. Good. What else? Hydrated cyst. Okay. Mm. So let's go through yeah. some features of the sign. What is this? So air fluid level. Air fluid level. Yeah. And what is floating in the fluid? But water cyst. Water lily cyst. Water cyst. This is called as a water lily sign. Okay. Water lily. Mm. Where there are daughters floating into that thing. Here, what has happened is that cyst is Putting potentially membrane. about to ball rupture. Is, rupture. Ball and this is, is the membrane. this is the membrane, the germinating membrane that is collapsed out. Okay, yes. so it's it's very easy. This is water lily sign. Okay, see some other things. Stay with me, Anuj. Just yes. describe this to me. Describe mm. the arrow that you can see. Mm. It's a, a circular opacification. Yeah, good. In the right lower zone. Okay. Describe the arrow. It's a fissure fluid. Meniscus sign. Uh, yes, meniscus okay, good. Yeah. Good. Somebody crescent. said that. Who said that? Crescent sign. Good. Well done. Crescent. So it's an air crescent sign. Air crescent. Okay? Air crescent. Air crescent. It's an air crescent within the hydrate. Okay. What else is an air crescent sign? Aspergiloma. Aspergiloma. Okay. So it's it's very easy. Nothing difficult about these things. You agree or no? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So all you have to learn is to describe that butterfly, and then you will be okay. That's why I put up that first picture for you guys. Okay, come in. Who wants to come in next? Shilpa, come in. Tell me what's happening here. Uh, this is a chest X-ray uh, PA view mm, with the uh, right dome of the. Uh, uh, diaphragm is well placed. However, uh, it appears there's an elevation of the left hemi uh, diaphragm. Yeah, probably can with you, can, the, you, can you actually comment on the left diaphragm in this picture? Uh, it is difficult. Actually, it is difficult to comment on the so left why, diaphragm. Why are you starting your discussion with the diaphragm? Talk about the obvious okay, sorry. pathology in uh, front of you. There's a. Um, there's a F. There is a well-defined, probably Good. cystic lesion. 
Uh, cystic Hello. lesion with an air fluid level on the left lower hemithorax okay. with uh, th uh, probably thick wall, thick uniform wall. Uh, hey, somebody's uh, phone is really ringing. Shilpa, just your phone on here. Okay. What else? The con don't, don't put the microphone to your mouth, just hold it a bit further away. Okay. Something, what do you see in this wall? Is uh, there something uh, different you see in this wall? Can you see multiple thick, layers or something? Multiple, yes, multiple layering is there. Multiple and layers. Can you see that? Can you appreciate? There is one layer, then there's yes. another layer, then there's another layer. Yes. What is this sign called as? Onion peel. Uh, Look like an onion peel, yeah? Onion combo peel sign. sign. Onion peel sign, yeah. Onion peel sign. Hi, Rada, this is... Narendra, switch off your phone. Narendra, switch off your phone, please. Okay. So we cannot uh, comment on the diaphragm in this... Uh... Can you comment on the diaphragm? I, I cannot. Can't. I don't know what the hell, where is the diaphragm? Can you say where the diaphragm is? No, can't, can't. I have no so, idea where the diaphragm is, okay? So don't talk about those things. Talk about the one thing which is staring in your face is the cyst. Okay. If you start talking about the diaphragm on the, as the first uh, thing, first sentence okay. that you say, then that's not good in the exam. All you want is, here is a cyst, here there is some opacity seen within the cyst, there is uh, evidence of uh, mm. there is evidence of multiple mm -hmm. peels happening. Uh, we can't see the cord cardiophrenic or costophrenic angle. Mm -hmm. What do you think is happening in this cyst? Uh, the cyst is probably in rup in impending rupture. Impending rupture. Impending rupture. rupture. Okay. Mm -hmm. For all the cardiac guys who are with us on this uh, uh, program, this is actually called as an onion peel or a combo sign where mm. you see multiple layers of cyst. Mm. This is because that air is now escaping into the capsule of the cyst and this is about to rupture. Okay? Yeah. That's what it is. Very simple. Let's okay. carry on fast so that we don't waste too much time. Somebody take this quickly. Yeah, Bushan, I take know this. this. Bushan? Yes, sir. This is a coronal view of CT scan with no markers. Uh, lung window. Uh, which is showing a cystic lesion with the thickened margins, well-defined margins. And uh, some membrane-like uh, thing is uh, within this uh, cyst. Uh, other uh, lung fields, uh, there are some pneumonitic changes uh, present. Uh, Probable diagnosis. All. Probable diagnosis is ruptured hydrated cyst. No, say hydrated cyst. Don't say rupture. On the hydrated cyst. Yeah. Just say hydrated cyst. Yes. Still cystic. Hydrated cyst. Rupture, but call it cyst. Yeah. Hydrated cyst. That's it. Don't don't hydrated jump into cyst. that. Let the examiner. Okay, come on. Who's uh, Nikhil? Come in and quickly tell me what you see. Uh, see. If I'm forgetting somebody, you must uh, remind me. Okay, I can't uh, see anybody's face. So, yeah, Nikhil, come in and tell me quickly. Just two lines. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the uh, mid, uh, this is unidentified mediastinal uh, window of a, a, a chest CT scan showing bilateral homogeneous uh, well defined cystic lesions. Okay. Um, uh, Differential diagnosis. Bilateral uh, bronchogenic cyst. Okay. Uh, Not common. But okay. What else? Bilateral hydrated cyst unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. No, why unlikely? Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. The thing, the one cyst that yeah. happens bilaterally yeah. is actually hydrated cyst. Okay. Hydrated. So, so bronchogenic is not common bilaterally, whereas hydrated is common bilaterally. So you should talk about common things common. Okay. Though the yes. features are not very classical of hydrated cysts, because you have just seen one shot, you haven't seen the whole thing. But bilateral cysts, usually you should think about hydrated cysts, okay? Yes, right. sir. Simple, well done, okay. So just quickly, here is the thing about hydrated cysts, two or three signs, an air crescent sign or meniscal sign, which we spoke about, combo sign or onion peel sign, water lily sign, okay? And always consolidation adjacent to the cyst is due to ruptured cysts, okay? So this is something that you have to worry about. Okay, uh, forget this. Okay, next, 25-year-old uh, guy comes in with the uh, uh, history of high fevers, uh, not settling down. IV antibiotics have been started. Somebody come in and read this for me. Chandan, come in. Yes, sir. 
uh, sir, this is a uh, uh, scan lung window. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, so this is a uh, lung window. Uh, CT scan. Lung, uh, CT scan chest lung window. Uh, showing uh, left sided cavitatory lesion with uh, uh, this um, highly dense margin irregular cavity sir left side and uh, it's a shifting media standard towards the right side and uh, according to the history it is most probably lung abscess what have you forgotten to describe there are two things you didn't tell me air fluid what is this yeah yeah yes sir there is a fluid uh, is a label okay yes. and what is and this onion peel not onion peel this Enhanced. is actually consolidation collapse consolidation yeah, yeah. Yeah, of the yeah, lung yeah. surrounding this area so more yes, likely sir. to be a lung abscess okay yes this yes, is a sir. description the other yes, thing which i would actually comment on this is that the quality of the lung doesn't look good it seems to have some bronchiectasis or some changes happening in both the lungs yes okay? sir all right well yes. done what do you want next investigation for this guy bronchoscopy uh, fluid aspiration and uh, no 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 investigation do you want to spill the cyst mm. what do you want to do no. next investigation somebody just said it bronchoscopy 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 well done you want to do a bronchoscopy you, you want to do what in a bronchoscopy bronchoalveolar patch Bronchial analysis. And so this is the follow-up of that CT, and gradually you will see that the lesion is resolving with antibiotics. So this is a good way to know that this is a cyst which is responding to treatment. Okay, uh, not yes. cyst. This is an abscess which is responding to treatment. Yes, okay. Uh, yes. Next, come in. Thank you, Chandan. Well done. Who is next? Thanks, Somebody sir. come in quickly. Vivek Srihari. Vivek, hi, kya? Vishal is Vivek there? Ashwin, yes. Sir. Exactly. Okay, Vivek Mundale. Come on, Ramasuri is there. Uh, hello. Ramas, I don't know. Sir, I'll. People on this. Where is? Yeah, Vivek so Ramas, my please take it. Yeah, I am here. Sir. Sorry. Yeah, Vivek, yeah. take it, please. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Uh, so this is a chest X-ray PA view, uh, which is showing uh, uh, a. Cystic lesion in the middle zone of the right lung, and on close-up view, uh, there is a air crescent which we can uh, see uh, on in that cystic lesion. The rest of the lung appears to be uh, uh, the surrounding lung on the right side appears to be a little uh, hyper dense, could be consolidated surrounding consolidation. And on uh, the close-up view, there is a uh, uh, solid lesion which is. Seem to be inside within the cystic lesion. Very good. Diagnosis. This could be. Uh, Aspergillus. Aspergillus. Ah, lung abscess or an aspergillus, sir. Huh? Aspergillus first. I would also so say this could be early hydrated cyst. We don't know that as yet. It's not very clear cut. But aspergillus so will be my first. First sign. No malignancy. Okay. okay, good. Lung abscess less likely, more likely to be an aspergillus. Okay, well done. Uh, continue, Vivek. Just describe this. Yes. Uh, so this is a CT scan lung window in a transverse section, which is showing a small uh, cystic lesion. Uh, sorry, small in uh, uh, the left lung, most probably upper lobe, which and uh, showing uh, air crescent. So and also there is a amount uh, left. Sided pleural effusion, which I can appreciate. Very good. You you seem to forget this fellow all the time. So, so the fungal ball, basically. <laughs> yes, there is a ball <laughs> seen within the cavity. Uh, that's why last CT or X-ray also I was pointing out. So you have to describe this fellow. No, this is quite important. It's is the classical sign of aspergilloma. Agree? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Well done. Okay, and and I like you picked up the pleural effusion because very often people only look at that cavity and they forget the pleural effusion. Okay, yes, all right. You. Somebody else quickly come in. Who is there? Vikas is there. Vikas come in. Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy. Yeah. Check it, Ramaswamy. Uh, uh, sir, a CT scan of the chest with uh, no identifiers. 
we are looking at the lung window and uh, we have bilateral uh, thick wall cavity lesions with soft tissue uh, lesions within the cavity sir uh, okay. classical bilateral aspergillomas with the uh, sur surrounding lung uh, the cavity has consolidatory changes with some uh, healed fib fibrotic lesions sir fibrosis as well so what what is your description leading to uh, you described uh, it beautifully what what are you talking about bilateral uh, aspergillosis in what could be could be tuberculous cavity in uh, yeah, post db sequel beautifully ramaswamy so this could be bilateral aspergilloma and previously in tuberculous cavity yes okay that's what i want you to say yes you described it but you you have to come out with the diagnosis okay yes. good thank right. thank you sir everybody okay with this so far so good yes yes, yes. is it making sense or is it getting yes, too much no it's okay good sir it's good, good. come on let's carry on uh who wants to come in next i don't know who's here just whoever is take it uh, vikas are you there Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to come and describe this. This is a. Uh, I can't hear you because your voice is going. <laughs> Andre, are you there? I'm here. Andre? Yes, sir. I'm here. Come in, sir. Oh, take this, Andre. Just tell me what it is. Right, sir. This is a. Uh, uh, non contrast ct you know identifiers and uh, the uh, on the right uh, lung field uh, shows a uh, 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 circumscribed uh, well demarcated uh, uh, dense lesion or uh, radio opaque lesion um, uh, and uh, the surrounding lung parenchyma is normal and uh, there appears to be calcification within and there is no mass effect associated with that Excellent. and i'd what like do you to see think it is stones. um if i could measure that uh, solitary permanent nodule okay uh, what uh, investigation you, wh what do you want to do next sir if i if i can see the similar lesion in a, a, a prior x rays it has calcification in more than 2 years excellent. and it's less than excellent that is the answer well done excellent you want to see the prior calcification in that okay and you want yes, to know whether is this changed or not changed but because there is calcification in the midline and it's very well uh, circumscribed is more likely to be a benign yeah. lesion yeah and the common benign lesion is hamartoma okay yeah. excellent i like the fact that you said you want to see the previous chest x ray okay well done right uh, because if your uh, connection has improved can you come in and tell me about this is vivek sri hari yes, on the line or not not on the line vivek uh, wanted to talk about vivek is on talking youtube you acha he cannot come in. okay somebody else come in why is there uh, sir why is there that is there bushan come in tell me what it is okay this is a, uh, a ct scan lung window showing an uh, splitted irregular mass lesion with variable densities uh, probably in the left upper lobe and it is abutting on the fissure uh 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 this thing surrounding lung parenchyma looks okay except the spicules uh, in the margins that is the probably most important thing i want you to yeah. talk about the spicules straight away because that is the key yeah, thing for this spicules. talk yes. about the spicules yeah. and see the fissure is getting pulled can you see this fissure this is a classic sign yeah pulled. the fissure is tainted, tainted. this is real classic this is you look at it and yes. diagnosis most likely to be yes. malignant nature of pathology yeah so it could be lung cancer yes. or no but it is malignant okay, okay? well done yes. excellent all right uh, is aba still with us yes sir aba take this one so it is a non contrast ct scan Uh, showing a lesion, a speculated lesion, uh, present in the uh, left lung, lung field, uh, most probably a malignancy, sir. Okay, so good. I'm happy with that. Quite straightforward. Nothing more. Okay, is uh, is Simran with us? Yes, sir. Simran, take this, please. 
so this is a uh, trans uh, this is a ct scan uh, of uh, uh, contrast uh, contrast and ct scan showing the lung windows and the mediastinal window uh, the, there's a uh, there's a uh, speculated uh, lesion in the uh, uh, upper lobe uh, with the lesions and um, uh, uniformly dense with the surrounding surrounding lung parenchyma <laughs> Next, what you want? Uh, so I like to see a previous uh, CT scan of the same patient to compare okay. it with the with the with the scan. Change size. And, uh, what you want to do? So Two it, millimeters it change in, size. What you want to do next? Uh, a biopsy of the lesion, sir. PET scan. We'll do a PET scan first. Sir. PET scan. PET scan. First, okay. PET scan first, and then probably biopsy this lesion. If it is changed, so, so, okay. This is the so SPM between, body. between the pet and the pet and a uh, biopsy. So pet will be pet will be the pre second uh, the second choice of it. No, if you do a biopsy and then do a pet, the pet will be and completely will like distorted. Right, right, right. Inflammatory right, changes. Right. So you should not right. do pet first. You should not do biopsy first. Should be sure, you should always sure, do sure. pet first because otherwise uh, you are going to ruin the and pet. Distorted. So pet will not right. be Okay. Right. So always pet first before you do a biopsy. Also right. possible that in a pet you might find a lesion in the D12 vertebra, or you might find a lesion right. close to the surface of the liver, and you right. don't need to do a CT guided biopsy of the lung. You can just do a needle biopsy of the lesion in the vertebra and get the answer. Okay, so it's sure. important to do pet first, not biopsy first. Okay, right. somebody else quickly take it. Uh, because if so you're good evening. Back, I'll, I'll, I'll try. Come in. I will try once more, sir. Yeah, try on for Vikas and then Vivek takes the next one after that. Yeah, this thank you, sir. An, this is non-contrast CT of chest, unhanded, unhanded patient. Uh, uh, lung window, it is showing a heterogeneous lesion, a speculated lesion in the uh, right lung, uh, close to the periphery. Uh, the, the nearby parenchyma is, uh, parenchyma I can't come in. So it is a speculated lesion and uh, I can see some uh, area of homo heterogeneity also in the lesion. Most probably, it's a um, it's a malignant lesion. Okay, and stop, stop with us one minute. I wanted to focus on this. Okay, now come back again. See this? This is a solid component, right? Yes, sir. And ground glass opacity. What is this? Yeah, so this is ground glass, glass surrounding the solid component. Glass. Yes. Okay, so this is not just how do you measure this lesion from year to year? We have to measure in two dimensions and take mm -hmm. the yeah, but you got to go to the periphery of the ground glass. Okay, yes, yes, sir. you understand yes. that. So, this is yes, specifically put this is a part solid, part, part ground part glass solid, lesion, ground it goes down the pathway of the part solid, part ground glass, and most likely to be malignancy. You have to yes. do the malignancy assessment of this patient. Low risk, intermediate risk, high risk. Okay, and then yes, depending sir. on which pathway of the solid pulmonary nodule, you have to decide how to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Yes, so it is a part solid. Don't forget the ground glass opacity next to it. Uh, come in, uh, Vivek Sriari, quickly. Hey, yes, sir, this is just sir. yeah. Throw it at me. Uh, so uh, there is a um, hyper uh, dense lesion in the uh, right uh, upper lobe. Uh, surrounded by normal lung tissue, uh, maybe a solitary pulmonary nodule. What is the description? I want a description. Uh, sir, well, well, circums well circumscribed. Hmm. Uh, pure uh, ground dust capacity, sir. Hey, hang on, yeah. Let him talk. Let him talk, please. Use the words which I want you to use. Um, maybe a ground glass opacity, sir. What? Maybe it is a ground glass opacity. Yeah. This is quite yes. classical ground glass opacity. Okay. Yeah, In fact, it looks multi-lobulated. Can you see there's another lobule layer? Yes, sir. And there's another lobule. So it's probably a multi-lobulated ground. If somebody asked me to describe this, I would say this is a CT scan of the lung with evidence of a lesion in the right upper lobe. Uh, looks multi-lobulated, looks ground glass, rest of the lung appears to be normal. I would like to rule out malignancy in this patient. Okay, that's yes. the answer. Okay, well done. Very well done. Okay. Come on, next. Uh, somebody come in quickly. Uh, Simran, come in. Simran, did you answer? Come in. Take this. 
yes sir so this is a uh, ct scan uh, in a in a coronal section showing a multi lobulated uh, uh, hyperdense lesion in the left one minute, uh, lower one minute, one minute simran one minute stop stop what ct scan is this sir uh, contrast enhancer okay anything more than that Cilti pulmonary angiography. Cilti pulmonary angiography. No, it's an angiogram. Yes. Right. It so is an angiogram can... because all the vessels are very yes. well right. highlighted. Can you see right, that? Right, all right. the vessels are very well highlighted. So this is actually an angiogram, not just a simple CT. This is not a contrast enhanced CT. This is actually a CT pulmonary okay. angiogram. Right, sir. Describe the lesion, please. So showing a multi-lobulated, uh, um, equally enhancing the lesion in the left uh, lower lobe. Hyper enhancing. Hypernancing. So, most probable di diagnosis would be an AV malformation in this patient. Okay. Well done. Well done. Very well. Yes. Okay. AVM. This is very classical. But you have to identify what is the CT. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Right, sir. Very well done. What is the syndrome? Uh, I wouldn't be knowing that, sir. HT, sir. HHT. Yeah. Huh? HHT. What's the name? Hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. What is the other name for multiple? If he's got multiple telangiectasia on the skin, oh, that is Oslo Weber Rendu syndrome. Oslo Weber Rendu syndrome. Oslo Weber Rendu syndrome. Good. Uh, what is this? Come on, Danish. somebody. Danish, take it. Danish, take it. Take it. This is a transverse sepsis. Both the lungs. I can't uh, hear you, Danish. Uh, you, your connection is not good. I can't hear you. Amina, are you on the line? Are you with the group? Amina? Yes, Prof, I am. Okay, Amina, can you take this, please? I'm sorry, I yes, forgot prof. about you, but can you no, take no, this? Sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, prof, uh, this is a non contrast enhanced CT scan uh, of chest and. Uh, uh, there are multiple small uh, circumscribed uh, nodules which are present in bilateral lung fields and there are some evidence of fibrotic changes in both the lung parenchymal fields as well. And I can see um, uh, multiple chambers of the heart in this view. And uh, there are a couple of small lesions which are present in the peripheries and there is one abutting the left pulmonary um, vein as well. So right pulmonary right. vein as well. What else can you see in the heart? Uh, I can see uh, bilateral pulmonary uh, veins entering into the LA and uh, there is a device. There is a device, yeah. In SVC, I can see a tissue valve. I don't mean to put you on the uh, Tissue valve. But this is what happens, that when you get so hooked onto these mm -hmm. nodularities, they really glare at you, and you get mm -hmm. so hooked on the pathology that you completely miss this. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's something happening in the heart. You describe to me beautifully the heart and everything, but this is an obvious pathology. Or something is not right, yeah? So you yes. must say there is some opacity or density on the right side, okay? Whatever it is, I don't want you to diagnose it, but at least describe it to me. Okay. okay. What probable diagnosis? Uh, Prof, it's a, a lung with a multiple metastatic lesions and something must Excellent. be compressing SVC and that's why we have put a stent in SVC. Well, we don't know if it's a stent. Let's not go there because at the moment we don't know if it is stent or not. But yes, I agree with you that this is yeah, yes, multiple yes. metastases in the lung. Well done. Okay. Excellent. Amina, stay with me and take this as well. Uh, so, Prof, this is another uh, CT scan of uh, a chest and uh, that is showing uh, a homogeneous small opacity with regular margins uh, in the peripheral uh, lung field on the right hand side. And uh, just let me have a closer look at that. And uh, actually, uh, 
the periphery uh, has uh, is uh, less dense on the lateral side as compared to good. the whole of it. Very good. Very good. Differential diagnosis. Prof, it can be a hematoma. It can okay. be. Mm, it can be a calcification. It can be um, a lung um, a bronchogenic carcinoma. Okay. What else? It's unlikely to be carcinoma because it's well rounded. Yes. But you're right. We don't know at this stage. It could be carcinoma. I agree with you. Yes. Can what we else? say SPN, sir? SPN. Yeah, this, this is a SPN. I agree. SPN. It's a solitary pulmonary nodule. But what are the other diagnoses? What looks like this? Can it be a carcinoid, peripheral carcinoid? Possible. Very good. What else can it be? Metastatic nodule. Yeah, it could be a metastasis, guys. It's a nicely rounded, peripherally placed lesion. Don't forget, this might be metastasis. So I agree with all your diagnosis. The one thing you have forgotten is to say this could be a solitary metastasis. Okay? All right. Next. Uh, is Adnan still with us? Okay. Is Adnan with us? Okay. Is uh, Pitun with us? Yes, sir. Take it. Okay. So, some um, chest x ray form of our uh, mostly it's a PA view. We uh, can see multiple rounded opacities all over the, all over both hemithoraces. Uh, and um, there is a device passing possibly through the, from the right, on the right, passing to the superior vena cava to the right atrium. Looks like to going to the right subclavian vein. It's a porta cuff, mostly. Okay, excellent. And it's a chemo, chemo port, yeah. Very good. Differential diagnosis like looks that. like cannonballs. Cannonball metastasis, uh, likely cancers which can cause this? Likely cancers. Hey, likely cancers. What are the different cancers? That Calling the carcinoma that are Adenocarcinomas. Adenocarcinomas. Ovarian cancers, sir. Ovarian cancers? Uh, Follicular carcinoma thyroid, sir. More common are breast cancers. Breast cancers. Breast cancer. I want you to talk about breast cancers. Breast cancers. Okay. All right. Okay. Breast Fantastic. Okay. Come on. Keep going. Next. Who's next? Uh, Nikhil, come in again. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Just describe right. it. This is an unidentified uh, mediastinal system of the chest mediastinal window showing multiple irregular uh, uh, multiple irregular opacity uh, uh, hyper uh, isodense opacities seen in bilateral lung fields. Potential diagnosis? Uh, multiple metastasis. Happy with that. Okay, well done. Uh, somebody else come in take this. Uh, Vikas, Danesh is your line back. Ganesh, is your line back? Yes, sir. Ah, the yes, sir. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the, okay, Ganesh. Uh, can I? This is a, a, a PET CT. Uh, uh, it is showing uh, a lesion left side the hematoris near left. Left bronchus. Which bronchus? On the left, uh, left main bronchus. Upper lobe. Actually, it's the upper lobe bronchus, but upper yeah, lobe. you're right. Left upper. But it's coming into the left main as well. Okay, what else? Yes. Quickly, quickly. Uh, this is uh, what else there is a classical golden eye sign. Okay. What else do you see, my friend? Uh, collapse consolidation. Of the there is collapse there is a, uh, of the left upper. Uh, collapse. Lymph node. Lymph node. What else do you see? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna come in and wait. finish this for me, please. What else do you uh, see? Prof, uh, this is a classical yes, golden eye sign. When there is a okay. lesion which is abutting the left, uh, any upper lobe bronchus, it leads okay. to atelectasis and collapse of the upper lobe. And this is a classical golden eye sign on CT scan. 
Okay, what is potential diagnosis? Uh, prof, it is. Uh, it can be a carcinoid because it's. It looks quite yeah. a hot lesion. Okay, what do you think? What do you want to tell me about the pet for this patient? It's an FDG. Avid FDG uptake. Uh, one minute. One minute. Wait, wait. I mean, a, prof, it, uh, sure. there is a, there is quite a high uptake of um, uh, glucose in this lesion, but I cannot see any other lesion inside uh, the medial What do you want to tell me this. about the pet of this patient? Dota scan. Dota scan. Dota scan. Uh, this is not an 18 FDG pet. This is actually mm -hmm. a DOTA pet. Okay. All right. D O T A, gadolinium uh, specialized pet. D O T A, okay. DOTA pet, mm -hmm. which is specific for carcinoid. This is actually not 18 FDG pet. Okay? okay. So when you talk about carcinoid, say? always try and say DOTA pet. That's the right DOTA pet. Okay. But of course, we don't know that at the moment. We don't know that because this could be lung cancer. But if you think it's carcinoid, say it's probably a DOTA pen. Okay. Okay. Because okay. It, the great uptake is always seen on DOTA, not on 18 FDG pen. Okay. And I like the collapse for consolidation. A, otherwise, for a heart lesion, can we give a differential of carcinoid? We can give a differential diagnosis. Uh, prof, uh, just one question at this point. Uh, that yeah, uh, only if you are talking about carcinoid, then we are supposed to mention that it is a dota pet, or yeah. the appearance of the pet can itself tell us that it is a dota pet or non dota pet. No, 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 no. D because dota is just the molecule. Okay. It's just a different molecule. 18 FDG okay. is the molecule used in a standard pet. In a dota pet, the molecule is different. And the okay. moment you say carcinoid, Try to correlate it with Dota pet. Say that this is probably a Dota pet, and, and that's a good answer to give. Okay. Uh, so what's the sign? Golden S sign. What is the sign? Golden, yes. golden as if golden color, and S as alphabet S. Okay. Okay. Excuse me, sir. One minute. Who who is asking this question? Ah, uh, Shashi Kiran. Shashi Kiran, yeah. Shashi, we have got three things to get through. Can we can we hold on? Unless he's absolutely desperate, otherwise we'll, we are already two hours down the road. Okay, I'll ask at the end, sir. Yeah, ask at the end. Let's finish the mass because it's important you see these uh, images. These are all classical images. Everything if you see here, it will come in the exam. I promise you this, okay? So let's get on with it. Somebody take this quickly. Come on, guys. Somebody take it. Uh, Bhushan, come in and take it quickly. Text the behavior. Okay. Who's that? Who's, somebody said chest X-ray PA view. Who's that? That uh, Srinivas, sir. Yeah, Srinivas, take it. Sir, uh, ch chest X-ray PA view. Uh, the left uh, lower zone uh, opacity. Okay. Uh, the mediational and the pleural products are the marked and uh, uh, diaphragm also is not seen. Okay, good. So most probably uh, massive left side and the pleural effusion. Oh, Does this look like a plural effusion to you? No, actually, the what do you get uh, in a plural effusion? Uh, the plural margin go, go is the, the fluid will yeah. sweep What do you think is more likely? I'm not margin. denying that there is effusion here. There may be effusion. I agree with you. But what is more likely? Can you see this? Can you see this? this see this? See this? See this? See this? See this? What is all this happening here? Uh, there is, uh, is that the collapsed lung? Uh, lung is here. Uh, yeah, the lung. No, this is the lung. Uh, the the outermost the portion lung. is the, the normal lung. Yeah. In the more, more media, um, medial to that is uh, hypogenic. Yeah, uh, what maybe, is it? Give me one. Maybe, something. Uh, maybe a uh, plural thickening that mass lesion over that. that it's a mass. It's a mass. Okay, there is a mass in there. I wanted to say there is probably a mass in there, some sort of tumor in there. Okay. It looks tumorous. It doesn't look pleural effusion because of the irregularity. Stay with me and give me the next one. Same patient. Give me this. Okay. The uh, CT scan uh, chest uh, contact Good. enhanced at the uh, at the level of uh, uh, bron bronchial bifurcation. Uh, sorry, at the level of uh, pulmonary veins. Arch uh, of aorta, pulmonary artery. Pulmonary, pulmonary artery. Uh, so a large uh, uh, 
left pleural and mediastinal mass <coughs> homogeneous uh, uh, well margined no irregularities uh, is it homogeneous or is there some changes within it little bit of uh, homogeneity in between changes actually it's multilobulated don't you think so there are multiple lobules within there if you look stand back and look you will see there's a different density here there's different a different density, density here um, so it's more um, like a multi lobulated multi the word i would use is multi lobulated okay you can see that, uh, there there seems to be a capsule agree yes a thick uh, wall is yeah. there what about this uh, what's happening here uh, it is uh, chest wall. it is invading the chest wall okay. uh, muscle excellent what's happening here uh, this uh, com uh, i don't know in this view uh, i cannot see the pulmonary artery on the left side uh, whether it is this is the pulmonary artery actually and what is happening here uh, abutting it abutting the pulmonary artery abutting and what else what is Invading. loss Invading. what is this what is this called as loss fat of fat plane fat plane there's loss, loss of fat, of fat plane loss here. of fat plane yeah there is a loss of fat plane here you agree yes sir. everybody agrees or no there's a loss yes, of fat yes. plane yes, see this yes, fat plane is seen here pretty nicely out here there may be some loss of fat plane i think but here definitely there is evidence of loss plane what is happening here the complete collapse of the left lung there and the there is a thick capsule little bit of calcification in the yeah, but more than that it's the collapsed the lung that is giving you the impression of a capsule what's happening here Uh, plural effusion effusion excellent excellent so you agree that that picture which you told me was a plural effusion is not correct because really there is very little plural effusion in this yes. patient you, you you understand that's why i was sort of shocked when you said plural effusion because this is all mass it looks yes. very lobulated this doesn't look like there is effusion uh, but on a ct it's quite clear that there's not much effusion a uh, differential diagnosis Uh, differential diagnosis. Come on, continue, Silvas. Uh, Di differential diagnosis. It can be an epigram test. Okay. So forties. Forties, excellent. So who said that? Yeah. Just continue. Yeah. It can be a teratoma. It can be a, a thymic mass. It can be a, a lymphoma. Lymphoma. Or it very unlikely to be a thyroid. Okay. But what else can it be? Jump cell tumor. Jump cell tumor. Jump cell tumor. Jump cell tumor. Would I say teratoma first, or would I call it a germ cell tumor? Germ cell tumor first. Germ cell tumor. Talk about germ cell tumor because of this invasion and this irregular margin yes. and out here loss of fat planes. Loss Teratomas fat do not cause loss of fat planes. So if you call this teratoma, I will question you. If you call it as a malignant germ cell tumor, I would think more. I would be happier with you. Then okay. Fine. Yes. Sir. Happy. Okay. Well done. Now let's not go into jumps and tumors. Sir, just one minute, sir. One minute, sir. Uh, yeah. One minute, sir. Uh, I request everyone once they have spoken, please switch off the mic because there is lot of noise coming, sir. Okay. After I agree. After we have spoken, we should switch off our mics. Yes. Sir. I completely agree with you. Thank you. And I'm going to continue. I know it's quite a long time, but I want to finish these images. Okay. Yes. Sir. I'll go on to a third session, please. Is everybody okay with that? Yes. yes. Yes sir. Yes sir. Anybody is yes, not sir. okay yes, you can sign out and hopefully see it tomorrow okay? <laughs> All right. Come on next. Uh who's next? Ami Amina you are still there? I am there for Take it please. Prof this is a contrast uh, enhanced uh, CT mediastinal window and it is showing um a diffuse uh, no sorry you know it is showing a uh, circumscribed uh, a mass which looks more or less homogeneous in consistency and that is Butting, uh, it's in the interior mediastinum and it's abutting the ascending aorta, encroaching on the ascending aorta, and to some extent the uh, superior vena cava as well. Uh, I, uh, there is some extension from the mass interiorly that is going into the interior chest wall and behind uh, and into and just behind uh, the sternum as well. and i can see laterally there is a little bit of rim of calcification on this mass as well uh, and yes a prof i said that the extension into the chest wall and uh, just uh, differential diagnosis uh, prof uh, 
a germ cell tumor mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it, it can be uh, a thymoma. Uh, yeah, the first diagnosis would be a thymoma on this because here is the, can you see the thymus here clearly? Yes. yes. And actually you can see it arising from the thymus. Yes, it's yes. quite clear actually. So my before germ cell, I would say thymoma first. It's more likely to be a thymoma, but everything else is possible. I, I agree with all the other diagnoses. But yes. because you can see the thymus here very clearly and it is it is arising from the thymus and this location is quite classical for a, for a thymoma. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Well done. Um, Chilpa, are you still there? Yes, sir. Chilpa, take this. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 this is a CT scan uh, showing the mediastinal window. There are no identifiers. There is an, um, it's a non-contrast enhanced CT scan. Uh, uh, the, uh, on the left side, left uh, side, there is a ill, ill-defined cystic uh, cystic lesion which is uh, oh, which is abutting uh, the pulmonary trunk but not uh, but the planes are preserved uh, is it a cystic it mass? Is, let me ask you this question again no, is no, it no, a cystic no, no, no. mass? It's not a cystic so mass, it? it's a homogeneous mass with some in, uh, multi lobulated homogeneous see, see, see. mass. It is heterogeneous. Yeah. It's heterogeneous. It's heterogeneous. Okay. Yeah. Homogeneous yes, heterogeneous. means everything is the same. This is heterogeneous. Yeah, right. yeah. What else can you see? With some uh, calcification uh, yeah. Yeah. In, in, internally as well as at the uh, margins, uh, at the uh, per, uh, peripheral calcification. Different uh, diagnosis. Middle, uh, germ cell tumor probably uh, teratoma or any mediastinal mass possible what else i'm in the favor of teratoma uh, good i like that, Who said yes. that? Yes. nikhil well done yes. don't forget about retrosternal goiter Retro 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 yes. you have to tell me the four t's yes okay. so this, uh, this turned out to be retrosternal goiter so i know this so that's fine but I'm happy with all the differential diagnosis that you've given. Okay, so don't forget the four T's. Okay? Is the sternum normal? Uh, no, it is normal. This is, uh, this is not. A, it's it's really normal. Nice. It's just the section it's that is, uh, at that level. Mm. There's, there's nothing wrong with the sternum. Okay, this is just at the neck, uh, just uh, lower down. Okay. 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 Quickly now, come on. Next to the Nikhil, you want to take this? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, bolo. This is a chest, uh, chest X-ray, uh, AP view, PA view. Okay, now, now just give me the pathology. We have, we have gone through all of that. Now pathology. Yeah. Just stick to the pathology. There is a uh, hyper hyperlucent, well-defined uh, uh, right, right upper uh, upper right upper chest. Yeah. Uh, what else? And the trachea yeah. is situated on the same side. Yeah, the is pulled, pulled to this side. Pulled, yeah. pulled to. The same what side. What else? Is it invading the chest wall? Or no? Uh, no, sir. No, it's a nicely lobulated. Good. I like that. Differential diagnosis. Nicely lobulated tumor, potentially not invading the chest wall, uh, situated at the apex of the right lung. Pancos too. And pulling the pulling the trachea to the side. Is this coming from the lung? Is it coming from a chest wall or is it coming from the mediastinum? It's coming from the lung. Media media it's pulling, oh, yeah. Yeah. it's pulling. So it's coming more likely from the media style. The spillover to this side is only incidental because of the location, but it's more likely coming from the media style. You understand? This is how you analyze it. 
Okay, now let, let, let me quickly go into this and show me what this is. Describe this to me. Neurogenic. Same tumor. <laughs> Describe it. This is a med Only the mediastinum. Only the tumor. Well defined circum uh, circumscribe uh, yeah. isodense uh, tumor with. Uh, I'm putting the vertebra and. Averting the superior vena cava. Okay. Good. And there is a um, device into the superior vena cava. Maybe, yeah. yeah. You're right. Bone cross. You're right. There is a device actually in the SVC. Correct. Well done. Give me differential diagnosis quickly. Uh, Four T's. Thymoma, teratoma, posterior mediastinum. Posterior mediastinum. Wait, 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 guys, let him finish. You, you, you carry on, Nikhil. Quickly, quickly, you are right. Just keep on carrying on. What is the first one? It's in the posterior mediastinum. What is the first diagnosis comes into your mind? Neurogenic, uh, yeah, it can be neurogenic tumor, but this is not just supposed to be, yeah. it's coming all the way up. Near well. So, we don't know what it is. It could be neurogenic tumor, it could be a teratoma, it could be thyroma. <laughs> this was actually a germ cell tumor, okay? So, don't sir, get in, made in, away in, in, just by sir, a posterior mediastinum, don't call it neurogenic. It could be sir, anything, but this is coming all the way from the front to the back, okay? Okay. Sir, in this particular uh, thing, we can we tell from which place it is coming? Whether it is coming from posterior? Okay. Very difficult yes. to say that. Very difficult. Unless you see all the images, it's very difficult to say. Yeah. But looks like it's in the posterior mediastinum. Looks like it's posterior mediastinum, but you have to see all okay. the images. Okay. All right. Come on. Next, quickly, uh, Vikas, take it. Vikas. This is a CT chest, non concar CT showing, uh, yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, it's yeah. Non concar CT showing a heterogeneous, yeah, yeah. well defined, a heterogeneous, well defined mass in the right, uh, right upper upper zone, uh, with areas of um, uh, calcification, and uh, it is pushing the, not pushing, it is. That's it. Uh, Abutting the abutting, yeah. abutting the vertebral, vertebral column. So yeah. probably it is arising from the vertebral recess of neurogenic tumor. Okay, good. Schwannoma. Okay, this was a schwannoma. Okay, well done. Uh, what is the next investigation in this patient? Uh, we'd like to do a PET scan first. Sir. MRI. 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 MRI is what you want to do to see whether it's invading yeah, into the yeah, vertebral yeah. column or not. Invading okay? the right. or not. Yes. Sir. Well, good, good. So now what is this? Vikas, continue. <laughs> this, is, this is an MRI. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <Okay>. Diagnosis. <laughs> I don't Mission know. Quickly. I got this, sir. I got this, sir. Okay, who is that? Come in. Shilpa, come in. Shilpa. So it's an MRI uh, neck showing in the left thymic region. There is a very small. Thymic? Uh, thymic, no. Neck region. Thymic? Thymic. thymic. Not a thymic nodule. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is thoracic outlet. Inlet. Inlet. Oh. Thoracic inlet. This is yeah. thoracic outlet. Uh, Bushan, take it. Good. This is a MRI, uh, okay. T2 weighted image with a well defined uh, homogeneous, uh, more likely density uh, mass lesion uh, located in the uh, supraclavicular or uh, thoracic inlet region. Uh, was suggestive more involved? likely of uh, because, because it close proximity to brachial plexus. Good. Plexus so you really and, want to uh, see the involvement of brachial plexus. Diagnosis is a neurogenic tumor. Okay. Well, neurogenic tumor. Okay. I, I won't go through this now. Okay. Are we guys still okay or are you are you tired? No, okay. sir. Fine, sir. Carry on, man. It doesn't matter. Fine, sir. Okay, sir. Plural pathology. Okay. Okay. Somebody asked me the other day a question. 
I don't know who asked me, how do you know whether it's plural or whether it's pulmonary? Take a screenshot from here. The angle is the important thing. If it is an obtuse angle or if it is an acute angle, if there's an acute angle, usually it's coming from the lung. If there's an obtuse angle, it's usually coming from the pleura. Okay. And uh, this engulfs the pulmonary vasculature. This just pushes the pulmonary vasculature. Again, this is centered along the chest wall, centered in the lung. Uh, Well-defined margins. This will have ill-defined margins. Okay. So I'll show you the picture. It'll be easier to understand. Okay. Somebody take this quickly. Uh, Prof, this is the review graph of chest frontal projection. It is showing uh, that uh, there is a pleural cap on the left uh, hamithorax, uh, indenting the uh, parenchyma of the left lung, and um, the indentation is uh, quite uh, homogeneous, and uh, we and the margins seem to be regular. Let's talk about this one. Talk about this one. Oh, uh, talk about this. Okay, okay. Uh, th this is a, uh, uh, a non-contrast enhanced uh, CT chest, uh, which is uh, showing uh, that there uh, is a, a lesion which is abutting. Uh, there is uh, with a uh, with a um, uh, clear uh, regular margins, and it is abutting the chest wall, and it is uh, homogeneous in consistency. Split. It is a lot, uh, and it is uh, uh, subplural. It looks like it is uh, covered with the pleura, the right pleura. Okay, so what is this? Uh, is it a plural mass or is it a lung mass? It's a it's an extra pleural mass. Uh, Profit can be a hematoma. Uh, don't yeah. call it an extra pleural mass. Call it a plural mass because extra pleural mass goes into the into the fat, the epi epi uh, the extra pleural pad fat. Okay, this is not going into the extrapleural pad pad. This is still within okay. the confines of the pleura. So okay, bro. first diagnosis. Metastasis. Metastasis. Doesn't look localized. localized yeah, it's localized. Localized pleural abscess. Collect. No. It's actually an empyema. It's a collection of yeah. uh, masks with calcification, okay? And there is no yeah. this thing. So this is split actually pleura sign. Empyema. This is called as a snip, split pleura sign. Split. Yeah, okay? Uh, okay. It's probably a loculated empyema rather than a tumor. Okay? Now see the next one, all right? Uh, Amina, stay with me and take this one. I'm going to take this. Are you with me, Amina? Or are you gone? Can you hear me, Prof? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, so, Prof, this is a uh, uh, non-contrast enhanced uh, CT chest, uh, which is showing uh, that there is a, a mass which is abutting the chest wall, and uh, it has got uh, regular margins, uh, but uh, it has... Uh, uh, it's not homogeneous it's in consistency, um, and uh, there is uh, it's uh, it's invading the chest wall. Yeah, there is evidence that this might be invading the chest wall. Uh, but the important thing is that the margin, that the angle is acute. Mm -hmm. okay. Can you see that the angle is acute? Can you can you appreciate that? So moment you have acute angles and. And something pushing into the chest wall, you don't know. This is more likely to be coming from the lung rather than the chest wall. This is the point that I was trying to tell you about, okay? okay. All so right. This is more likely to be a lung pathology invading into the chest wall rather than a plural pathology pushing into the lung. Look back there and look here, okay? So that's yeah. the difference between the two. So it looks like a plural, plural tumor, but it's not. It's actually a lung tumor, which is... So look at this angle. This is very important. This tells you, moment you have lung coming on this side and lung coming on this side, the angle becomes acute. And this angle tells you that this is actually coming from the lung rather than the pleura. Okay? All right. Next, uh, Nikhil, take this. It is not. This is split pleura sign. Split pleura sign. This one, take this one. Different. Complete describe. Chan, jaldi, jaldi, I have to finish. Come on, guys. CT scan of the chest. Yeah, take it, Ramaswamy. 
yeah ct scan of the chest sir i'm uh, yeah. describing the ct scan uh, yeah yeah go ahead yes yes uh, ct scan of the chest uh, mediastinal window with a loss yeah. of the volume of the right hemithorax with severe yeah. and Excellent. there is a like loculated uh, collection with peripheral calcification uniformly uh, mo most likely a chronic empyema with calcification sir crowding yeah. very good what about this collapse consolidation of the lung yes, the underlying lung, lung the underlying lung is collapsed very collapse and consolidation very good so this is probably a calcified empyema excellent ramaswamy i'm very happy with that description thank you uh, we did this okay i uh, know this is right. okay. so come here somebody take this yeah i'll take it yeah, who's that fitun come in yes sir so we have uh, CT chest non enhancing uh, non contrast enhancing where we can see uh, the left hemithorax is uh, completely occupied by non homogeneous uh, opacity with uh, multiple consistency there is a uh, uh, you can inside most likely to be some a sort of necrosis uh, we're pushing the mediastinum to the right to the right mm -hmm. side Very good. Um, and uh, there is loss it's con contact abutting also the pericardium uh, okay. and abutting the major the major valve vessels also in contact with the descending aorta and uh, also to the chest wall there might be some invasion also to the chest wall diagnosis possibly it's germ cell tumors or Something occupying the whole chest. What is more like pulmonary plastoma kind of yeah, Very good. So it probably is a plural tumor. Something that occupies the whole chest usually is a plural malignancy. Most likely it could be an SFT undergoing a malignant change. Yes. Okay, because there is invasion of the chest invasion of the chest wall. Uh, it could be a solitary fibrous tumor which is growing into the whole thing. The lung you cannot see on this film at all. Okay. It's probably a malignant solitary fibrous tumor. Okay. But any, any differential diagnosis is acceptable. I, I, I am happy if you say pluripulmonary metastases, uh, pluripulmonary tumors, so other pulmonary. things. I'm very happy. But most okay, likely it's a malignant yeah. okay. okay. Somebody take this quickly. Namaswami, come in, take this. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, it is a CT scan of the chest uh, contrast. Uh, sir, uh, we are looking into the mediastinal window. Here we are able to uh, see the left, uh, 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 the parietal pleura on the left side is uh, uniformly thickened and ragged, sir. And uh, uh, which is invading into, I mean, we are able to see. It is showing the fissures is involved. Yeah, the involvement of the fissures okay. and extend. Okay. Yeah. Keep talking, keep talking. You're doing very well. Uh, yes, there is a enhancement of the uh, the pleura. Uh, the uh, pleura is irregular, uh, uh, invading into the lung parenchyma, and the fissures are involved. Uh, uh, most likely, it is a mesothelioma, sir. Excellent. Well done. Excellent. Yes. Very good description. Vivek Mundal, are you there? Vivek, are you still with us? Yes, sir. I'm here. Vivek, take this. So, this is a CT scan of chest, uh, contrast enhanced uh, in a mediastinal window. We are uh, looking at multiple uh, loculated uh, uh, thick uh, kind of uh, fluid filled uh, uh, lesions which are seen. Uh, around the circumference of the pleura, uh, around the circumference of the left chest and uh, the surrounding pleura appears to be uh, enhancing at uh, the parietal pleura appears to be enhancing and the lung is compressed because of the uh, fluids would be uh, multilocular to pleural okay Correct. differential diagnosis it could be multilocular Forget to the arrows. don't go don't go with the arrows just yeah. first shot if you see it what will you say so multi-loculated pleural effusion. Excellent. Very good. I'm yeah. so happy you've given the correct. Yes. This is the diagnosis. Don't go into mesothelioma domain straight away. Okay. So the first thing that you see on a CT, this is probably a multi-loculated effusion. You don't collection. know what is the cause of the multi-loculated effusion. Yeah. That will be decided. But I would in the exam say this is a multi-loculated 
a pleural effusion, it could be due to any reason. We have to actually discard, define it on VATS uh, pleural biopsy. So you've got to get in there and take multiple biopsies. It could be empyema, it still could be infection. We don't know that. So be careful about it. Don't jump into mesothelioma straight away. Okay? If they ask you, you push into it, then you say that. But otherwise, describe this as a multi inoculated pleural effusion. Okay, all right. Quickly, next, what is this? Come in, who is next? Uh, Bhushan, Shilpa, whoever. Uh, if Hello, Abba is there, Abba sir. can take it. Uh, so it's a non-contrast CT scan. Take of, it. yeah. Good. Good. It's a non-contrast CT scan of the chest showing a yes, non-contrast showing a, a, a mass present in the uh, right. Uh, sorry, the yeah. left uh, ch left chest posteriorly seems yeah. to be arising from the uh, from the pleura and okay. uh, Very good. solid heterogeneous uh, and uh, what do you see uh, within it? Uh, so it's uh, solid and uh, uh, calcified. 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 Use the word. Use the word calcified. This is calcified. calcified. Right, right. Yeah, this is calcified. a calcified. It's a pseudo tumor. Okay, well done. Excellent. Very good. So I like the fact that you called it a plural tumor, not a lung tumor. That is important to understand. Okay. So this is a, a calcified mass on the chest wall, which is called as a calcified pseudo tumor. Okay. Somebody else come in quickly. Is Simran still with us? Yes, sir. So this is a CT scan uh, transfer section uh, showing a mass in the left uh, left hemithorax, uh, irregular uh, uh, with the probable invasion into the chest uh, chest wall. Okay. And, um, um, uh, seems a heterogeneous uh, opacity. Okay. Uh, most probably a tumor arising from the uh, pleural surface mesotheloma. Or what else? The bones are abnormal. What else could it, it be? Can it be one of the chest wall tumors? Okay. How do we what else can it them, be? Sir? The reason why I put this at this stage is you must think of something sir, can coming it be a, from it, outside it can the be, chest. It can, can it be a, um, a cold abscess of the rib? Uh, unlikely because the ribs is not showing. What, what else will happen in the pleural? There is a fracture there, sir. Pathology. There is a fracture there. The fracture and the presence of the bone there tells you what. What is happening? Hematoma. It's a bone. Uh, it's a bone tumor. Pathological fracture, sir. Pathological, Pathological fracture. Yes. What else? Give me a diagnosis, Simran. Give me a name. I agree with all the other diagnoses you said. One hundred percent. The one thing you've missed. Which I want you to say metastasis. I want you to say metastasis. Okay. Don't forget metastasis. This could be metastatic from outside the chest. You understand that? So the, the, the presence of a pathological fracture, presence of this, everything else is acceptable. Osteogenic sarcoma, this, that, that. But don't forget to say this could be plural metastasis. I'm specifically making a point here. Okay, so don't Forget to say that this could be plural metastasis. Stay with me, Simran. Take the next one. Oh, wow. So this is a, a, a transfer section uh, um, CT scan showing a massive uh, mass arising uh, uh, in the left hemithorax, arising from within the chest wall and invading into the uh, uh, pleural space and externally. Uh, okay. Most probably... Uh, uh, is it a plural or is it a lung? Uh, it's a plural, uh, plural uh, good, mass or something coming from right. outside uh, and inv invading into the into the chest wall. So it is uh, multiloculated with the heterogeneous uh, opacification with the speckled areas of uh, calcification. Not multiloculated, but multilobulated. No, multilobulated. Okay. Right. Not multi loculated. Loculation is different. This is a lobulation. Yes, sir. Lobulated. Okay. Right. And uh, I'm trying uh, to help you by pointing out something. And it's involving the bone, uh, involving the ribs on uh, the left side. Actually, the ribs look normal. That's what I'm trying to show you. Mm. That there is no but erosion no, the, of the rib. Uh, Did you see that? It's yes. a nice and smooth. The rib is and smooth. The, there is no evidence of erosion of the rib at the moment. Right. You understand that? So what yes. is this likely to be? Do you mean a differential diagnosis? Yes. I don't exist. We come from the right side, sir. One rib is totally gone. Where Can the it be a soft tissue there? sarcoma? Okay, soft tissue sarcoma, I agree. What else? Lipoma. Because just hang on one minute. What else? 
I agree with you. Soft tissue sarcoma. What else? The myoma. So any soft tissue tumor. Okay, let's not go into the histology of it. So I agree with you. Soft tissue tumor. What else can it be? Can it be a mesothelioma invading into the chest wall? Possible. What no. else can it be? Can be. Metastatic nodule, sir. Ah, thank you. I was just waiting exactly. for you to say that. Okay. So please, I was trying to make a point that don't talk about local pathologies. It could be a metastasis from anywhere. Yes, sir. This is less likely to be a primary lung because this is not. The ribs are not involved. not involved at all. Look at this. The ribs are very clear. If this was any local tumor, it would usually erode the ribs. This is more likely to be a hematogenous spread and it has grown very rapidly. It has not actually involved the ribs. So, all other diagnoses were correct. I have no problem with the differential diagnosis you gave. Right. Don't right. forget metastasis. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay? All right. Thank you. A uh, little bit about Askin's tumor. This is a specific tumor of the uh, pluripotent cells of the uh, lining of the pleura. Go through the textbook and it'll tell you all about it. Let's carry on to the next one. Okay? Quickly. Now, really quickly. Okay? Now, we don't have time. What is this? Uh, we can't take it. Tumor tumor, sternal metastasis. They non contrast CT chest uh, so showing a section at the level of arch of aorta. There's a large homogeneous mass at the, arising from the most probably from the sternum. It is okay. uh, almost reaching the arch of aorta and okay. uh, compressing, compressing the thymus around. So it is most probably a mal malignancy arising from the sternum. First differential okay. will be a costochondral tumor, uh, second um, will be osteogenic sarcoma. And okay, uh, it's a sternal tumor. That's good enough. Sternal, but, but I'm very happy because you gave me all those. But don't forget, this could be a metastasis. Metastasis. Don't, don't forget to put a metastasis in your list of differential diagnoses. Okay, come on, next. Who's coming in next? Uh, Nikhil, come in. Okay, yes, sir. Spot diagnosis, Nikhil. Spot diagnosis. Now, don't spend time describing it. Just give me a spot diagnosis. Nikhil? Vectus excavatum. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. Thank you yeah. very much. Well done. Uh, <laughs> not excavatum, carinatum. Why did yeah. I say excavatum? That's what it is. Not carinatum. Carinatum. Don't bloody mislead me. Uh. Carinatum is what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Now, Amina, this is your baby. You know this inside out. Uh, yes, Prof. This is a yeah. This excavatum. This okay. Is. So, let, let Bushan take the next one. What is this yeah. Bushan? What is this yes. X-ray? Nasprod. Oh, this is procedure. Nasprod. Nasrod within the chest for, done for pectus excavator. Nasrod. Rod is not the word we use. What is the word we use? Bar. 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 What is this on the side? The studs. They call fixation studs. Yeah, fixators. Okay, so they are fixators. You can have one rod. More than one rod, it depends on how they yeah. do the thing. Okay, so this is correction of pectus excavatum. All right, excavatum. okay. Uh, somebody explain to me uh, this one, Amina. What is this? Just explain for everybody, uh, Prof. This is halogenesis uh, that we are trying to Excellent. calculate. And, yeah. um, uh, we are comparing the, the anteroposterior to the transfer diameter of the chest, and anything okay. which is more than 2.75 is significant. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is Haller's index. Okay, Hallas. A over B. Yeah. Yes. And more than two point seven five is significant. Excellent. Uh, come in next, uh, Vikas or Andre. Come in. Is Andre still with us? Yes, sir. Take this, Andre. Uh, right, sir. Uh, this is a three D reconstruction um, uh, uh, of the. Uh, this is a three D reconstruction uh, from the CT chest, and it shows a. Uh, uh, rib based, it shows uh, 10, uh, 10, 11, 12. Uh, from the 10th rib, uh, uh, a growth uh, rising out and er eroding nine the cortices. 9th rib. 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes, yeah, sorry. The 9th rib, uh, the tumor er er uh, arising out of the shaft and uh, uh, eroding the. What diagnosis? Osteosarcoma of the rib? Fibrous no. Fibrous no. dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous See this? Dysplasia. This is classical fibrous dysplasia of the rib. This is not a malignant condition, okay? This is classic <coughs> fibrous dysplasia. This, this appearance of all along the rib with an irregularity on the surface of a rib is not a malignancy. 
it is actually called as fibrous dysplasia of the rib okay this is just for your knowledge just something extra to learn today okay uh, somebody come in with this vikas come in if you are there डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस Any of the bone tumors, okay, right bone from chondroma all the way up to osteogenic sarcoma. Okay, on a CT scan you cannot clearly on this reconstruction you cannot clearly say what it is. This needs a biopsy and histological confirmation of the tumor. Okay, all right, it was actually a chondroma. Uh, still got time? Everybody is okay? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, quickly. What is this? Pacemaker. Cardiac pacemaker. Yeah, what is this? Elevated right hand diaphragm. Right arm of right. Right. Uh, 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 diaphragmatic pacing. One person. Diaphragmatic one person coming. Ramaswamy coming. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, it is a chest X-ray PA view. Uh, we are able to see uh, a herniation. Or, I mean, there is a diaphragmatic hernia, sir, on the oh, right. Uh, Hemi diaphragm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with uh, yes, uh, gas shadows. What is the differentiation? How will you differentiate this uh, a hernia from a eventration? You can see the level of the diaphragm clearly. Yeah. Yes. Dynamic. Yes. Ramaswamy, how will you differentiate uh, a eventration from a hernia? <laughs> What's the next investigation yeah. you will do? Fluoroscopy. Yeah, flu fluoroscopy. Lateral. View. Before fluoroscopy. Ultrasound. Yes. Before Lateral fluoroscopy. Chest. Come on, Lateral. guys. Lateral, Lateral chest, chest X-ray. Lateral chest. Okay, you'll you'll do a lateral chest X-ray because you want to see whether the two diaphragms are at the same level or what the hell is happening. Actually, this was an eventration, but you can call this eventry as well because. You can actually see bowel loops bowel within it. Okay, yeah. so from yes. you can get a medial side herniation and bowel loop. So I'm okay if you call this uh, hernia. That's not a problem. But then you need to investigate it a bit more. You need to get a lateral chest X-ray done, and you need to do fluoroscopy. That's the main diagnostic test. And a fluoroscopy will tell you whether the diaphragm is affected or not affected. Okay, happy with that? Yes, sir. Right. Thank uh, you. Yeah, come in, Ramaswamy. Stay with me and tell me what is this. Uh, sir, uh, sagittal section of uh, the uh, CT scan chest, sagittal section. We are able to see uh, a defect in the diaphragm with a herniation of in abdominal contents into the chest. Uh, uh, through the hiatus. What is the location? Through the hiatus. Sir. Through the hiatus. Parasocial. It's a paralysis. Paralysis is learning. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Well done. Well done. Happy with that. Okay. Thank you. Now I don't have time to go into each details of these, but I want you to see the snapshot and understand how to diagnose these. Okay. Are you happy yeah. with this? Are you okay? Yes. 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 I can slow down, but then we'll be here all night. Okay. Next one. Uh, you don't take this. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, um, Sagita section of uh, chest CT scan. Uh, we can see the there is herniation of the abdominal contents into the into the mediastinum. Good. So it's again it's a paralysis of the hernia. Is it? Even no, it's not eventration. Okay. No, no, it is hernia. It is not eventration. It's not eventration. The diaphragm is down there. Yes. So it's a high stomach. Yeah, it is. Ah, that's hernia, not paralysis. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Well done. Okay. What is this? This is very difficult. I should ask you. This boss dialogue hernia. It's a bit bad. What is this? Okay. Somebody take this. I'll go back to the previous one. Yes, sir. Uh, Ramos, Swami, you want to take it or Vivek? Are you still there? Yes, sir. More agony. More agony. More agony. 
Mm. Yeah, so it's a hernia in the front. Yeah. Mm. That is a hernia at the back, okay? Here is the hernia. Yes. Can you see this herniation? Yes. The herniation at the back yeah. is usually morganic. Uh, is usually a morganic. Okay? Morgan. All right. Yeah. Esophagus, quickly, we have done this. Now, this is not difficult. <laughs> we have done all of this, so I just want to show you and just throw the diagnosis at me, okay? We have done this in the last lecture. So, uh, uh, is Pallavi not with us? I forgot. Is Pallavi with us or she's not with Pallavi us? Pallavi is not coming. She's not on here. Okay. Uh, so, is Amir there with us? Yeah. I'm going Amir. Isn't it? Sorry? Amir Mohammed can come in. Tell me what is this, Amir? What study is this? Is of and endoscopic ultrasound. Okay, good. Uh, do you want to tell me what are the various layers, or we know this? Just tell me the four layers: one, two, three, and four. Bus. Don't go into nine. Just tell me four layers you see on an US. From outside and adventitia. Yeah, outside in or inside out. Adventitia, muscular layer, submucosa, and the mucosa. Muscular layer, what is there in the esophagus? Sir, can I? Sir, no, let him finish. No, Amir is still there. <laughs> muscular layer, what is there? Just a single layer or two layers? Two layers, outer circular, inner, uh, longitude. Uh, okay, somebody give me a diagnosis. Who said can I? Screw, box screw. What is the pathology? Oh, Diffuse yeah. Thank you. Uh, well done. Uh, Cox screw is of it. Somebody else take this. Zenkers diabetic. Yeah. Vivek, take it. Sri Hari Vivek, take it. Zenkers diabetic lump, sir. Excellent. Uh, through. The gap, the gap is through what area? Killian's uh, triangle. Uh, yeah, Killian's triangle, yes. Killian's triangle. Excellent. Somebody tell me what this is. Zenkers diverticulum. Zenkers diverticulum more likely to be a traction diverticulum rather than a Zenkers. Mm -hmm. Because there is tuberculous change in the apex. Okay. Apex. And, uh, not clearly seen, but it's a tuberculous change in the apex causing a diverticulum. It's actually a traction diverticulum, not a pulsion diverticulum. Because it's a pulsion diverticulum. Okay, next. Uh, I mean, anybody else wants to come in some new Echelation. Yeah. 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 Rat tail sign. Rat tail sign. Not rat tail sign. Parrot beak. Abnon still Birds beak. Birds beak. Yeah. Birds beak. Yeah, but somebody else take it. So, Chandan, you want to take it? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, this is a X ray, chest X ray showing uh, it's not just uh, a barium cell of uh, a barium cell of film, sir. Yeah, showing a uh, butt beak appearance. Uh, okay. the esophagus diagnose excellent. Good, good. We've done this. Uh, okay. uh, what is this? Lower. I won't bother you. This is the diaphragm. It's very close to the diaphragm. It's an epiphrenic diverticulum. Forget, Epiphren. Forget this. What is this? Again, not fair for you. This is not fair. It's intramural epiphrenic. Forget that one, okay? That's not for you. Guys. What is this? Sir, scarce case ring. Sarskis ring. Well done. It's official okay. ring. Uh, Thank you, sir. All right, guys. We have been through everything that is needed in histopathology in the radiology of the lung. Okay. I, I can't teach you anymore. <laughs>
Well, thank, thank you very sir. much, Paul. Much appreciated. Thank you. Just one minute. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, one minute. Let me just oh. stop. Sir. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm very sorry. It's been a very, very long lecture. I apologize for. Oh, that. come on. <laughs> thank you, sir. Uh, very very thank uh, you. Hours, but I will show you everything. Okay. Yes, sir. It's very important to see everything so that. This is how the exam goes. You really know the diagnosis, yeah. you know the answer. Just learn to describe it. Just remember that picture of the flower. You have yes, of the butterfly. You have to describe <laughs> butterfly. that butterfly to a blind butterfly. That's all you have to do, okay? All right. I won't take any more questions now because I am tired and uh, yes, yes, sir. My yes, sir. Wife, <laughs> time, so <laughs> let me just butterfly was super recording first. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.